Episode six of Don't You Fret, I got Robbie here from The Contortionist. What is up? What's up, dude? Um, <laughs> under under the, the bullet points for today, I have Shreds Prog and Is a Twin. <laughs> those are, are those my hashtags in, yeah, in 2020? <laughs> yeah, those are your 2020 hashtags. Nice. Actually, the first time I uh, I toured with you guys, I didn't know you, like the members of the band, and I saw you guys in like separate rooms, and it really tripped me out a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a, a common experience among touring personnel for sure. Yeah, it's like what what did you like? Yeah, twenty five pounds, and, and your hair is different now. Like what? Yeah. What? Um, how are you, man? I'm good, dude. Um, I'm you know living that. Corona 2020 life, and um, honestly, things have things are great, but not touring sucks. But yeah, um, I, I can't complain a whole lot. Um, what are you filling the void with at the moment? I mean, you guys are obviously so, killing it on Twitch right now. We're yeah, we're doing the Twitch thing. The we're doing a weekly Wednesday um, Twitch stream with the band, and then I'm, I'm doing my own thing on Friday. Um, oh, and your so own that's stream? That's been fun. And th- yep, yeah, yeah. Have you been doing I'm that? I'm going to have to have you on there sometime. Uh, yeah, I, st- I started it last month, and I've just been doing, like, um, just, like, re- retracking old contortionist stuff and, like, trying to come up with riffs on, on Twitch. And that's fun. No, that's been, so sick. It's been fun. Um. And so, yeah, there's, there's been the, the Twitch stuff and, um, you know, Contorts was supposed to have a record out actually right around this time. And, um, with, you know, the events of this year, the deadline has sort of evaporated. So dude, I um, know exactly what you mean. Yep. So that, that whole process has slowed to, I don't want to say it slowed to a halt, but it's definitely not what it was. Um, well, like at the end of last year, we were, we were slamming at the end of last year, right? Right. And you're, you have all this stuff planned and like, you probably had a tour yeah. around it. And that's the thing. It's like us old heads, I yeah. guess I'll call it is we, <laughs> we want a tour around the release. Right. But it like, who knows when that's going to happen again? It's crazy. It, it, that's the thing. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's crazy. Oh, um, crazy reality. Yeah. We have a record. We're just like sitting on that's ready but we just don't know what to do at this point and i guess and like oh really we're playing the single game for a little while okay that's cool yeah how many singles do you guys have i don't know yet we we have (laughs) we have like this long extensive like timeline put together right now it's like super mysterious and weird (laughs) Yep, uh, we're, that's kind of where we're at. It's it's mysterious even to us. Right. Yeah, that is kind of it is very true as like for us as well. So yeah. Um, dude, I loved touring with you way back in the day. Uh, we're already good friends, so this podcast is gonna be super fun. I think. You're also a guitar yeah. player. I look up to a lot still to this day. Oh, dude. Likewise. Oh, come on. I was I was creeping on your Instagram. I was like, dude, this guy's got riffs. <laughs> I have like three. I have three whole riffs. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, real quick before we get I started, I yeah, I know. Before we roll into yeah. it, I have two sponsors. I always just give a shout out to. Um, there's logos Word. all throughout my my layout here. Uh, Seeds Coffee. If you go to the link underneath the chat, you can use "Don't You Fret" as a coupon code to get. I think it's like 25% and free shipping off your first coffee order, which is sick, to your house. And then we have a guitar pedal company based out of Birmingham, where I live, called Swindler Effects. And if you use Don't You Fret as a coupon code, you get 10% off your whole order. Fun stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Swindler Effects. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah, look at their website. It's really cool. Actually, as a matter of fact, um, you know, if you're ever in town... They have been nice enough. Been nice enough to give me an entire demo board. Oh my god! Yeah, Look it's like that thing. it's their NAM board, so I can literally just play with every single thing they have endlessly. Is that 
What's that thing on the bottom there? Is that a uh, like a patch bay? The rectangle? So In the middle? Okay, yeah. on the front it says programmable looper. So I'm going to stick with that. Okay. But gotcha. there is a lot of like power within this thing. Like I know it's basically like a pedal board brain, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you can like program like preset um you know patches that have certain pedals turned on at certain times yes. and, and that kind of thing. And I, I really I really Very need cool. to learn more about that because you know Okay, I'll just dive into a little bit of history. I played bass in era for a couple years when I joined the band. And That's I right, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I sold all my guitar equipment growing up to buy like a bass and some bass gear to play an era. And then like two years in, they're like, you want to play guitar? And I'm like, cool, dude, that's sick. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I bought, I had some crap and then I bought a Kemper and then I've just been using it ever since. Nice. So like as far sick, as man. like, yeah, as far as like gear and like heads and pedals, I'm really ignorant when it comes to a lot of that. So like I've been taking this quarantine as like kind of a chance to uh, dabble and play and I might be making the switch back, which is a weird topic for a lot of people. To switch back to what? Tube like heads. Amps? Yeah. Tube heads? Dude. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> so the reason it's... being is I got the Rev, the G20. This little guy. Oh, right yeah, there. I saw that. Yeah, it has twin torpedoes built into it. So. Um, okay, so basically it's, it's an I. Me. Yeah, yeah. It's an IR load box di so oh, sick. I, you were asking me right before we started um tomorrow i'm going to be on the contortionist twitch stream for those of you who are watching uh so we have to be sure to go hit oh them a follow and Sean, stuff. hold up dude I've, I've muted you and i can't figure out how to unmute you <laughs> he's a boomer forgive okay, him sorry <laughs> sorry dude it's okay you're like you're talking, and I'm like, how do I, how do I do this? And then I know, you're just and then playing. I completely muted you. And then the video is in the way. And I, okay, sorry. So <laughs> twin torpedoes there. Right. So <laughs> okay. Built in. Tomorrow I'm going to be on y'all's Twitch stream, the Contortionist Band. And right before That's this, right. Robbie was asking me how I send my guitar audio to, I guess, basically my audio interface or into my computer. So I just play pedals into that head, and it di's into an audio mm -hmm. interface. Very sick. Yeah. So you get like an ex and then they have like, there's like a little knob on the front that you can preload five different cab sims on. So you can just, so if you like play around on the laptop and get the cab sim you want, you can upload five variants into a hardware knob, I guess. Right. So yeah, I just, I basically so, just play ahead on the internet. <laughs> dude, to me, this is like, it's like the best of both worlds and, and it's like, Maybe maybe guys will start going that way more. Um, that's kind of what I was doing on our last tour. Um, Did you have a separate my... load box? Um, okay, so let, let me let me see if I can walk through it here. So I was I was running with the uh, the Mesa Triple Crown, hundred watt version. Nice. And what was I doing? So we had no cabs on stage. We sh we showed up the first day to this uh, to this tour. It was the Devin Townsend, Aiken, and Katorsis tour. So sick. Um, it was it was gnarly. Both of those bands are absolutely insane. Oh yeah. Um. Okay, so how was so I was coming. So yeah, you had you my... had to have some sort of IR load because without a cab, a head won't work. Well, the thing with the the triple crown is it has the it has a load built in. So oh, it you does. Can switch the load on, yeah. So I so I'd have the load switched on and um, and then I'm okay. So this is what it was. I, I was forgetting a piece of this puzzle was that the uh, triple crown has an output on it that is a line level, um, line level version of what's coming out of the speaker output, which okay. you can then send into an IR. Uh, which is really cool. So I was hosting um, a couple IRs in in my uh, Line Six Helix in stereo, and I think I was I was just sending mono to the front of house, I believe, and then stereo was just for my ears, just so 
Yeah. You know, just so I was having more fun, you know? So you, yeah, you guys have in-ears, uh, right? You have like a full in-ear rig. Yeah. 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 That is super sick. And, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, man, that's was, like kind you know, of the move I want to move to like, cause yep. man, even campers are sick. I think campers are the closest thing to a real feeling amp as far as like a digital thing goes. Um, mm-hmm. but I hate my in-ear tone no matter what. I hate it so much. Really? Yes, dude. I feel like my it, in-ear tone is just constantly that monitor tone that the sound guy can't get right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hate that so, so much. Good old days of <laughs> the house monitor guy, dude. <laughs> dude, I used to it, I used to just tell monitor uh monitor guys to just cut, just mute the monitor and I'll just crank my cab up on stage. I would just deal with it. Like I don't care. Like I'll just <laughs> I rather that. That was kind of the move and in those days, yeah. Yeah, it was for you sure. Had, you had the drum sound on stage and then the cabs, and that was that was all you needed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can relate to that dude. Like the 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 in ear guitar tone is not always sick. Um I think that may that might be why I even tried doing stereo in, in the ears was just to have a I don't know, just a better experience with hearing what I'm doing and and yeah. not feeling so dry. Um and I, I don't know if you've ever messed with, um, well, what's it called? Um, I'm spacing the name of this company who makes these IRs, but they make them so that um, you can run certain pairs in stereo, and they're like meant to be ran that way. Oh, um, dude, what is uh, that? Sounds crazy. I'm gonna see if I can find this. If anyone in the chat wants to help him out, be sure to. Uh... <laughs> End his suffering. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that sounds cool, though. So I, I have do- the name. I was going to say I have the name of the IRs, but I, the, the name of the company is not on them. So they're like, um, they're 412 diesel IRs. Okay. Oh, this one's actually a 412 diesel mixed with a, a Mesa V30, which is really cool. Um. Man, I wish I could remember the name of them because I, I would totally shout them out right. Oh, Own Hammer. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Ohm Hammer? Own Hammer. Okay. Like O W N Hammer. Oh, okay. Um, I thought they super, were being punny. Super sick IR. I thought, yeah, that thought like Ohm, <laughs> like O H M Hammer. Like that would have been right. Yeah. Man, they, they missed out on that one. <laughs> yeah, they blew it. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to try their calves out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds really sick. I want to no, give that a try. In, yeah, dude. They have a bunch of cool stuff. So I'm actually like range of, running like, probably the most complex setup ever right now. Just for my, just to honestly, just to learn my head, like the ins and outs of it right now. I have yeah. a couple pedals, like basically a pedal board run into the front of my head. And then I have my Kemper okay. in the, in the effects loop. And then out of the back of the head into my, uh, audio interface. And then on. <laughs> so you're using the Kemper for like time-based effects and stuff like that. Yep. Or like just Very simple sick. stuff, like I like it. It like incorporates the built-in noise gate that the Kemper comes with, which is cool. And I can oh, nice. even like adjust the gain through the Kemper because that's always been a feature too. And then the cab is on top just of like the just the output gain. Yeah. And then yeah. the cat, the Kemper, or sorry, wow, geez, see, I'm already confused. The head is on top of a one by twelve, so <laughs> I will play the one by 12, but also like mix in my, uh, my studio monitors at the same time. So it just sounds like I'm everywhere in the room. It's crazy. Dear God. That's sick. <laughs> so are, you, are cool. you doing some kind of, are you doing some kind of wet, dry, wet thing with the effects? Or are you just, are, um, are you hearing the same thing out of the monitors that you're hearing out of the cabinet? I'm hearing the same thing out of the monitors, but I can hear it to okay. a higher level because there's two different ones panned opposed to a one by 12 is just putting out, like they sound drastically different too. Um, yeah. <laughs> why? I don't know why. That's I don't really have cool, an answer man. for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have that answer. Have you messed around with wet, dry, wet? I have. Yeah. Uh, when I went, so the guy who owns Swindler Effects lives pretty close to me, and I went to his house where he like builds the pedals and everything. Um, and okay. he had a Morgan amp there that he like tests his pedals through and we went through Sick. like some extensive, um, they have a tremolo and a chorus that are kind of really in depth. 
So I played around with like a tremolo bouncing me between two cabinets and stuff like that. Super oh, crazy. Dude. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Yeah, it's really wild. But that's also like kind of Just the effect swimming. I'm Yeah, it's like kind of the effect I'm getting from this cuz it's like coming from so many yeah. different areas of my room, <laughs> my office, I guess. Right. Anyway. <laughs> I just like we geared it, we gear nerded out way too hard in the in the beginning. Uh, let's let's. I have like a couple of questions that I like run through in the podcast just to keep like a structure to it. Um, tell me about young Robbie learning guitar and listening to music and like what music was like for him. Young Robbie was. He was an insane little. <laughs> little bastard <laughs> so weren't we all i start right yeah so i started playing guitar when i was 11 whoa and this would have been 2001 okay um and you know the first few years just kind of poked around didn't really learn much of anything um had a bunch of buddies who played guitar as well and i remember uh my friend sean funny enough his name is sean um, he showed me what a power chord was. Ooh, game changer, bro! <laughs> I, I I didn't know what a <laughs> yeah, power yeah. chord was. I was it's just funny. Like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's funny that people who like know like the E chord and the A chord, and they're like, "Why don't you do it like this?" And they just <laughs> like riff out a power chord, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> I remember those days for sure. But yeah, dude, he, he this kid showed me a power chord, and it just forever changed my life. You know, I was like, that's how you make a guitar sound like that. Because I always like, I always knew that electric guitar distorted sounded cool. And it had this, it had this thing going on, but I didn't, you know, I was just a stupid little kid. I didn't know what was going on. Um, so yeah, that was my intro to guitar. And then from there it was just, it was just a whirlwind of learning anything and everything that I could get my hands on. What was your go-to? um like bands yeah or okay like i mean <clears throat> it started with you know i don't know blink 182 dude that is like Slipknot. one of the most reoccurring bands on this podcast it's crazy really? that apparently blink 182 fueled the progressive metal scene in 2020 <laughs> it seems like <laughs> It's funny how that how that stuff happens. Yeah, it is. Really, but I mean, I did too. I, I I abused those records when I was younger. Oh yeah, and they were just so fun to play like with they your were. friends because you know like we had friends that that played guitar and bass and and my brother Joey played drums around that time and we were just jamming like oh, yeah. eighty two songs in the basement. It was it was. It's just fun. It's funny that, like, obviously I know Joey, your twin brother, plays drums, but I never realized that you, like, growing up had an in-house drummer at all times. <laughs> that never I occurred did, to yeah, me. dude, in-house. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> yeah. I actually, yeah, was... I actually started on drums, and my dad was a guitar player, but that was never going to happen. That was never... <laughs> I was never going to, like, play drums for my dad growing up. <laughs> Play that's a that's a thought right there. Playing drums for your dad. <laughs> yeah, he never played guitar for me either. It never worked, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I I remember uh jamming with my dad a few times growing up, but like we had uh like a seldom few records that we could connect on. Yeah, I think that and was I, like I, the the thing for sure. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I didn't I didn't come to appreciate my dad's taste in music until i was you know much older um even though you know i knew as a kid like listening to zeppelin and rush and stuff like that i knew i I loved that stuff but when i you know when i first started playing guitar i was too yeah 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 and i was too busy thinking about like blink 182 and and the use and stuff like that so Um, yeah that's that was me young i was just trying to learn all the stuff and Joey and I would learn stuff together. He played guitar for a while, and and he decided he was too cool. Cool. <laughs> he wanted to carry a bunch of heavy shit everywhere. <laughs> what an idiot! He really chose and, the wrong and path. And lord it. He, <laughs> yeah, he wanted to carry heavy shit and lord it over everyone else forever. <laughs> 
He wears I a, carry the heaviest shit. He wears his symbol around like Flava Flav, dude. He wants everyone to know that. <laughs> no, but it was it was super cool growing up, uh, guitar player drummer duo. That is awesome. Um, yeah, so we, we did all the we did all the school stuff together. Like we did show choir band together, and he was he would travel with us with the drum line, and I was playing guitar and bass and stuff like that. And bro. I was in the show choir band in high school. That's so sick. I think I, think I remember talking to you about this. Really? We, like, we connected on the fact that we we were both in show choir bands and that, that we were the original bass players of our bands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Wow, I don't remember that yeah. conversation. I feel like like when I tell people I was in show choir band, they're just like, what? <laughs> like, it, there's <laughs> always there's you? always a misconnect. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. Show choir, but you of all people could appreciate we that we won nationals for best band, so that was super that's, solid. That's sick. We knocked you and Joey that's right out of the sick. park. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't think we ever traveled out of state for anything, so that that probably says a lot about like how sick we were. Uh, um, but but we won some regional awards or something like that. But you know, either way, it was it was a lot of fun. That was just that was my school, man. Around. We took everything way too seriously. Actually, there's a there's a trail that I bike that's in front of my old high school, and they just oh, nice. added on like a multi million dollars um what is it called like arts department to the school for the band. Oh wow! Because I think our like marching and concert band even now has like six hundred kids in it alone. It's what? Yeah, it's so stupid. Dude, but that's rare. You, I feel like you usually hear about schools like struggling to fund their yeah, music no, departments and their not, art departments. Not mine. It's, and it's so funny. I abused it in high school. Like I hated school growing up. I just it was never there for me. But like even I, I dropped out when I was sixteen. Even when I dropped out, I probably spent four hours out of the school day playing guitar. I played for the jazz band, the concert band, the marching band, and the show choir band. I was like, I still hate school. I'm out. <laughs> and then I quit to play guitar for You're some. Just... Yeah. <laughs> so funny. They they tried. They're like, like Sean, for all the guitar you can play guitar in school. I'm like, nope, I'm out. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they. Uh... I hear you, man. Yeah. Ooh. It's a lot of super important. I wasn't. You know, graduating yeah. high school. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't the best student myself, um, but music definitely probably got me through it. And, uh, yeah. And then I was on the same path as you. <laughs> yeah, we're, st- we're, we're both touring, st- touring in some band. Stuck at home during a pandemic. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> um, writing. So you, you were young, Robbie. You were jamming out to Blink. And... I guess I don't really know the timeline. You played bass and contortionist first, I guess, and then. Yep. Yep. Are what? What's the contortionist original lineup? Were you a newer member, or were you an original on bass, or what? So the OG lineup was was Joey, Cam, um, this dude named Jake. He was the singer. And the keyboard uh, player, this, right? Ki- I think he, yeah, I think he smashed the the vocoder around a little bit. Okay. That um, that little Korg keyboard that that folks might have seen Mike playing um, yeah. at our shows. Yeah. That thing's that uh, that thing is mine, and it's been used by every singer in the band. Like, <laughs> it's since, older than most inception. of the band members. <laughs> it is, yeah. That's it's so basically it basically is a band member at this point. Yeah. Shitty little piece of. I, I, I I'm kidding. I, <laughs> thing is 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 all right um but yeah uh some kid named tom played guitar and then i think joey and like invited me to a, a practice one day and he was like hey you want to come like play some coheed and cambria songs with us and i was like fuck yeah and uh so joey so, was in the band as a drummer and you ha- you didn't you were no part of it yeah yeah, I, I was in some other band at the time. I was actually gonna ask. We I were, forgot. I got sidetracked. So we're, there were there were bands growing up that you and Joey didn't have any. Like you had your own separate stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yep. 
podcast. Yeah, and I think that was the the first one that Joey was in that that I wasn't in. And they they were doing their thing for a little bit, and I was in this band called Mobius Theory. Okay. <laughs> we were a we were kind of like a dream theater cover band, and yeah, and we we wrote like nerdy, just kind of really just lame music yeah yeah no i get like cheesy because even like some dream theater is cheesy but it's dream theater so it's like oh dude it's the ultimate cheese yeah but it's sick um (laughs) um dude speaking of which have you heard that new petrucci record i haven't heard the record i heard a couple singles and they're they're sick like i listen to them yeah it's it's dope i'm i'm probably not gonna go like listen to the whole thing and and you know get real stoked about it but like it, it was cool to hear petrucci and portnoy playing together again and in like a very um, modern sonic way if that makes sense yes yeah absolutely um here's the thing about his music is <laughs> i probably wouldn't listen to the record just on my own like if someone like sat me down and showed it to me i'd listen to it but if he did a playthrough for every song i would watch every song from beginning to end because it's fucking John Petrucci, like you just do, you right, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, just hoping that some of his, his, the way he holds the guitar could, might just rub off on you a little bit. That my my biceps the might get plays. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. He he. There's a couple guitar players out there in the world that just look effortless in that sense. He's one of them for That's, sure. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being being a kid and watching him, and I'm just like, just the way he plays a stupid power chord is like amazing, and it sounds yeah, so good. Like, and he's you just remember, flawless. You remember when you find out you can use your pinky for power chords, like when you're like 16 years old? <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> pivotal moments, dude. <laughs> Seriously though, like actual pivotal moments that now sound so silly. God. <laughs> Like your life just instantly took on a different trajectory once you figured that out. Literally from going from this to this and you were like, and then I started riffing every future riff that I ever might know from that moment on. That's right. A lot of joking in this episode. I can't help it. It's just Robbie. He brings it out in me. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Yes. So, sorry. Joey was in Contortionist. Obviously, fast forward, you hopped on. Um, have you and Joey always written together? As far like, I actually don't know y'all's writing process. Um, yeah, Joey and I are are. I mean, I would say we're consistently um writing together. In in every song that we've written, it's uh, uh, I guess let me put it this way that. Uh, the collaboration and group effort that goes down in in songwriting, um, Joey and I are involved most. Yeah, um, as in to say, com- in comparison with everyone else. In the right. Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even still, so, I feel like you guys as a band are very collaborative and like to try out everyone's ideas. Like even from watching some Twitch streams. It feels like you guys just are real fluid with one another in the sense that, like, you guys just kind of let the music take its own shape, which I admire is really cool because Era's never been yeah. that way at all. Oh, really? Yeah, Era is like a riff conceived in a tab program and then built upon, and then we bring it to each other very <laughs> close to the end of the process. Like, <laughs> um, oh, well, dude, I've been there for sure. Yeah. And that, that, that way of doing things was definitely how we did things um, in the beginning. Like Exoplanet and Intrinsic were definitely hugely written in that uh, format. Um, and then Language and Clairvoyant was kind of us like figuring out how to start to incorporating like writing within in DAWs and and uh, you know trying to do a more collaborative effort that involves passing files you know audio files around rather than like midi files and stuff like that yeah and i mean to me it's like at the end of the day it's like whatever gets it done um in the way that you need it to if if like if passing around midi certain things is 
is best and sometimes it's preferred uh, like absolutely go that go that route yeah so be it um, yeah and so yeah and and so now we've sort of moved into a a method that is like a hybrid of doing the you know passing around midi yeah and, we and audio files we do that a good bit now too um right on and it's like you just can't help but admit that after being in a touring band and working with dolls so much that it just kind of almost becomes easier like it's it takes maybe three minutes to actually track a riff opposed to programming it into a tab program it's just like <laughs> that's right high school kids are yeah, on it's... another level bro because that's what everyone did in high school yeah yeah man it, it's crazy like yeah yeah learning how to use a doll um it's good it's good for you it's good for everyone um yeah, what, what sure. do you use for for recording <laughs> it's funny we we were talking about the reaper of streaming but i actually use the reaper for recording as well <laughs> <laughs> which is reaper <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah um mainly because I love reaper dude I actually explained this on another episode, but basically I learned on logic. I okay. swapped from Mac relearned on pro tools because of the subscription. Like you don't have to pay for it the okay. flat out. You can just do it like a subscription, but I hate yep. the I lock. It's too ugh, look at me. I'm, you know, I, uh, so then I wanted to just like, expand and learn more about other DAWs, but also still record in the process and Reaper's free and takes like 30 seconds to download. And now I just keep using Reaper. So it's yeah. like, I've learned three DAWs and they're all, I hate like learning one is atrocious and I've really put myself <laughs> in the ringer. Uh, yeah. They are. I remember trying to learn Cubase, which was really the first DAW that, that I tried to learn. And just figuring out how to get audio into <laughs> yep. the interface, like yeah. for me anyway, was such a like you know the meme of the woman and there's like math problems for yeah around. yeah like, yeah that was me dude <laughs> that was me dude like trying to figure out like wait if if I plug this in here you know it'd be actually what really does that mean <laughs> really entertaining you should just like. It would be amazing to take like a recording like engineer or something and then just force them to record a song on a completely different doll from scratch <laughs> and just and just watch their world explode. Cause like I'll do stuff that I is still in my muscle memory from Pro Tools and I'll just like delete a track and I'm just like <laughs> like Awesome. All awesome. right, yeah. Let me Google for thirty minutes how I can get this track yeah. back and then Yes, Dude, super true. Yeah, that's that's the life, man. <laughs> Yeah, I love um, being a musician. Yeah. <laughs> I um there was a moment where um so I was using Cubase elements for for years, which is like the the entry level Cubase um you know, the entry tier level Cubase. It's and, like what they give you with their um yeah. audio interface. Yeah. Yeah, you, you yeah. buy an interface that comes with Cubase elements. Um actually it comes with Cubase le or something yeah and you can upgrade the elements for like i don't know it's like 60 bucks but uh there was a point in time where um i had reached i finally found one of the limitations of cubase elements and i was like well this fucking sucks and and uh <laughs> and so i started looking at other options and I, and I had logic but for some reason logic has just never i don't know there's something about it that I don't know. I just, maybe I need to spend more time with it and just and just f figure some stuff out. But for whatever reason, Logic has never sat right with me. So I, I gave Reaper a shot, and I loved it. I was like, I can totally switch completely over to Reaper, and I did for a while. I was using Reaper for a good couple months. Um, Is that what I you guys run live? Because that's how I found it was running it live. Um, we actually use Ableton Live. Okay. Um. For our for our backing tracks and stuff like that, um, we I've heard Reaper is is good for that because it's so light. Yeah, and dude. If it's like, so easy talking about recording while streaming, it, you'll you won't even notice that a uh, software is really. Running. Yeah, it's it takes like megabytes maybe. I don't understand it's how. how. It's funny how it does all the things that all the other DAWs do, 
but it's like you said, it, it downloads instantly and it installs instantly and it opens instantly. And then you look at something like Cubase or Pro Tools and the install file for that is like 12 gigabytes. I, I, like and it's actually, I'm ashamed to admit the amount of times I've deleted Reaper off my computer because I'm like, all right, I'm going to get another DAW. And then I like don't feel like it. So I just download and then start recording immediately <laughs> in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Dude, I, I still can't even believe they don't they don't charge more for that. And even if you don't ever pay for it, you can still just keep using it. <laughs> no, I'll, right? That's the thing. I'll with send Reapers, you yeah. money, buddy. Don't worry. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying it out. Seven years in, they're the nicest guys over there. We, <laughs> they're too nice. There's one guy in Canada just pulling his hair out. He's too nice. Is that what it is? No, but I just like to. Oh, you know the whole Canadian <laughs> just, stereotype. It's like, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> are you gonna pay me for that program there? No, not no. Yet. And he's like, okay, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, just let me know. Yeah, you get it. I've heard, I've heard wonderful things about their um, user support as well. Like, folks will hit them up with the most heinous issues, and <laughs> and somebody gets back to them instantly, and they sort it out. I'm just like. <laughs> And then I try to call Steinberg for help with Cubase. Yeah. And it's like nothing. It's funny to imagine that the people asking for the heinous requests also don't pay for Reaper. They're still trying the right. demo version out. <laughs> Gosh. They ask you when you call and they're like, "Do you? what's your license for Reaper? And you're like, uh, I don't have one. Like, <laughs> okay, all right, bud, let's, let's figure this shit out. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Re Reaper's Reaper's too sick, man. I, it I'm, is. I'm gonna start using it more. I think. Yeah, I think after this actually, conversation, I'm only gonna use it from here on out. <laughs> officially endorsing Reaper. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I um. I'm gonna put a little Reaper recently, logo over there. Yeah. <laughs> I recently switched over to uh, Cubase Pro. Okay. Which was, which was uh, awesome. So is that I, is that I, the top of the top? Is that like max tier Cubase? That's max tier Cubase okay. right there, cool. and it's super dope. All like, I didn't even all the cool things that I didn't even know I needed to use in a DAW are in Cubase Pro, and it's just like, I oh, mean, I should have done this five years ago. Yeah. Um, but and I think some of that stuff you can even do in in Reaper. Um, something that that I really dig is the uh, the batch export feature in, yeah. in Cubase Pro. Okay. And I, I, I have to wonder if Q, if uh, Reaper does anything like that. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Um, but I so this is like a little nerdy thing I've done a couple times. I like to go and download the stems from like some of the biggest pop songs. Um, oh, dude, yeah. So like I played around with an Ariana Grande stem pack the other day. Dude, me too. Really? Which song? Uh, I don't know the names of her songs too well. Um, so I, I I actually was looking at this session the other day. I was uh, it's a song. I think it's called Problem. No, I don't. I think I think it's one of the it's older the one. ones. Yeah, the one I like, is one of her older ones. Her vocal track and harmonies. Like if no one's ever done this or checked it out, just Google Ariana, like acapella or like <laughs> just herself or whatever. It's insane. Um, oh, dude. So is it batch yeah. import or export? It's batch export. So you can tell uh, it like, okay. So, so if I'm doing like, um, like a, if, if I'm mixing something and I, I want to just bounce out like my mix buses for, for stems for somebody, I can just go in there check all my mix buses and then it bounces out each basically stem for you. Okay. Yeah. I don't um, know if Reaper does that. Whereas before you had to solo a track, bounce it, go back in, solo another track, bounce it, and you had to do that like dude last you know, week ten I times had or whatever. Nick Nocturnal, the YouTube dude on the podcast, yep. and he was telling me that he still uses Elements, and every time he does a collaboration with somebody, he has to export a stem one by one. I'm just like. Oh. Bro, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's definitely not. This is what I used to do, though. Yeah. This is what yeah. I used to do um, when, I was, when I was doing that shit. I, I would bounce something, and then I would go do push-ups. <laughs> just Dang. to like, not lose my mind. Yeah. Right there. there you go. So I'd bounce something, do some push-ups. You know, three minutes later, it's done bouncing. Go bounce something else. Just do some more push-ups. And it's just like, 
I need to stay focused on bouncing this shit as fast as possible yeah. right now. So like, yeah, see, that would not be I do to. I would bounce something and I'd start a video game and the match would last 40 minutes and then I would start bouncing something else. So they'll get their stems by next Tuesday or something. I mean, right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's still me, but, but the ideal me <laughs> But I'm is, getting is jacked. Doing push-ups. Well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Gosh. Yeah. Um, Good guys. times, man. Sorry. Uh, alternate universe. I have like little notes in my phone for, for these. And so I just, I almost troll myself. This one says alternate universe, no music. What that translates to is if you weren't in a band or you couldn't be in a band, similar to how the pandemic is these days, what do you, uh, what do you fill your time with? You weren't playing guitar and stuff. Well, that's kind of what my life is like right now. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, well, not always, but I, in the last, I don't know, five years, I've gotten real into photography. And, um, so I, I started a, a, a real estate photography operation last year and, um, uh, I've been doing that. Um, I'll, I'm doing that a lot during, during lockdown and, and even up until, till now it's kind of slowed down in the last few months, but I was surprised during lockdown. I was, I was shooting like nine, 10 properties a month. Well, people are buying and, and selling right now. I know that for a fact. Yeah. 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 The market's insane. My fiance and I have been looking at stuff just because we're trying to get out of the renting game. And uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I'm out of it. It's, and I'll tell you it's worth right it. Now. Yeah. You're, you, you're a homeowner? Yeah. I am a homeowner. Damn, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. We own a three bedroom townhouse. Uh, Very cool. <laughs> Five minutes drive from Zydeco in Birmingham. Oh, very good. Yeah, so you know exactly the area I'm at. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's like a half the rent I pay for a one-bedroom here. It's insane. Yep, that's that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, our rent right now is... Well, our, the rent in this in this area that we live in has just been skyrocketing over the last few years, so it's just to the point where it's, it's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, yeah, and trying like, to get out of that for sure. It, like buying a place is scary, obviously, because you have to have a down payment. It feels like a lot of money, but then like you, like if the property value goes up, you get it all back. It's insane. Like yeah. when you rent a place, you're just literally kissing that money goodbye monthly forever. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's not a good feeling. It's not. No, we we've done a lot to our place since we've moved in and we plan on doing more to it. Probably possibly we don't know if we'll be here for a long time, but who cares? Like it's ours. We can be for as long as we want to. So it's like, right. Right. How long have you guys owned that place? Uh, we've actually just moved in a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, dude, I don't, congrats, man. That's yeah. Thanks man. Yeah, it is. It is big. It in a homeowner. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. It, it's nice. It just feels um, like I think a lot of people are just scared of owning a place because it feels permanent, but there's nothing. Per- I mean, you being around real estate of all people know that like it's it just as easy to sell a house as it is to buy one, if not easier, probably. It's very true. Yeah. And and even now with the markets, it's crazy. Um, And hopefully we're not headed into a <laughs> crash economic yeah. downturn, yeah. you know. Um, although I do, I do think some, some of that is inevitable. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to what degree can we, um, spread it out over time? I don't know. Hopefully some smart folks can figure that out. But, right. Well, and it's even um, too, like, if you can't sell your place, you just rent it out, <laughs> you know, like you, you have so many, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm biased cause I, I do own, but like I see, I've seen the light, yeah. you know, it's like, I get it. You've seen the light. Yeah, yeah, I get the value in it. Yeah. Uh, so yep, real estate it's, photography. Uh, it's it's. A, yep, I've been I've been doing that for for about the last year. Um, I love doing that. You know, you you show up, you're working by yourself. It's a. You know, it's a long day of of doing all kinds of stuff, and it's you know you're going out and you're shooting somewhere, and some days you're shooting multiple spots, and then back home and you're staring at a computer screen editing for what feels like days yeah. sometimes um and that's really the the part that i don't like 
Um, that's just that's pretty. Uh, that seems to be the the common conception with all photographers, including yeah. the the ones in our scene. You know, the the touring band photo dudes and. Oh yeah, yeah. I know, dude. Like, um, on on the reimagined tour we did a, a couple of years ago, um, the photographer that we brought out on that tour, this dude would literally stay up until like five a.m. editing photos, and then he would sleep. He would sleep past load in and just do it again. Ugh, <laughs> like, yeah, it's miserable. By the end of the tour, he was like the only guy that didn't see any sunlight or anything like that. <laughs> he just looked, he just looked rough. Yeah. And I was like, man, you're doing such a good job, but I feel, I just feel so bad for you. Like, <laughs> dude, I have major, major respect for our, like, one I'll, I'll shout out is Ray Duker, the August Burns Red Fit for King. I've toured with him so many times. Yeah. Dude, he'll. I think I follow him on Instagram. Oh, you know, he's amazing. He'll throw me like a f- yeah. Dropbox folder with everything I'd want from the day before, and I'm like, "How did you get these to me, dude? These are insane." <laughs> and he's doing it for like three and bands on a just tour. Looks awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you so have you played around yeah, with any something. other type of photography? Um, I'm actually working for a a photography studio here in Indy called uh, Interstate Studio. And um, we've been doing uh, school portraits. It's, okay, uh, yeah. it's fall portrait season time. There so, you go. So I've been in schools, um, hanging out with the little COVID monsters. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was at a, an elementary school this morning, so it was, uh, it was pre-K to to sixth grade. And I, dude, I love it. Like, I had never like worked professionally around kids or anything like that yeah um i've got i've got nieces and nephews that that i hang out with but like just this whole experience of of being around kids so much is like it's been really cool and i i really enjoy it and obviously the the photography part of the job is fun and um it sounds like a hard age to photograph it can be yeah i've actually found that a lot of younger kids are well, it kind of depends on the school, really. But sometimes the younger kids are just easier to work with than the high school kids, just because the high school kids are, you know, they hate everybody. And okay, and yeah. <laughs> so one year in high school, I, it's so funny. I never thought I'd think about this ever again in my entire life. But you're a portrait photographer, so one year there was a line, a long line to get our portraits taken for the yearbook. And we kept passing around the same button-up shirt. <laughs> no one stopped Just, us. So if you go to that yearbook, literally like 300 dudes have the same shirt on. <laughs> and so sometimes... <laughs> sometimes the, the, the whole page would just be one plaid shirt. Oh, it was so good, dude. Yeah, you said that was in high school? Yeah. Dude, that... As a as a photographer, I would get a kick out of that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, as a school like secretary, I would probably lose my shit. <laughs> Dude, it was so good. <laughs> and you got to know that probably no one thought anything of it, but then the person right. like gathering the photos was like, yeah, they're like, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> like like five six months down the road, like they they were not ready. Oh my god, I bet the I bet the photo studio got fired the next year. <laughs> so good <laughs> that's insane dude what yeah. a great like yeah solid prank for high sure. school prank yeah because yeah. it's harmless Be- well it is <laughs> yeah yeah until the photo studio gets fired right yeah. <laughs> r.i.p photo studio well we that's had, awesome um, we had a, a prank in high school where um <laughs> somebody released um three pigs into the school <laughs> and they they numbered the pigs one two and four so they and thought there was a third running around they saw they Dude. thought there was a number three around. oh that's so genius <laughs> god these, these pigs are just running around <laughs> <laughs> that's so good Dude, the mind of an uh, evil high schooler super i know dude they're, conniving it's yeah it's a special thing man that's hilarious. Years from now, they're going to find the, the dead bones of a pig, numbered three. Right. <laughs> Never found the pig. 
That's so oh, good. That's awful. Uh, so wow, yeah, you're so you're just doing that full time right now, while, or just like as much as you can be, or yeah, it's right now it's full time, and um, I'm doing I'm I'm mixing some stuff and I'm doing some session work as well, and but that stuff is not included in the uh, the no music alternate reality. Right. Yeah, it's true. So. Yeah. <laughs> My my universe where all uh, music yeah. has been stripped. Yeah, yeah, no music. Live Nation has come out and said it's canceled. No one plays music. Yeah, music <laughs> is canceled until there's a vaccine. Yeah, which ugh, I don't want to even go down that road. I know, right? Super scary. It's um, cool to see some shows popping up though, like they're doing the social distancing thing. Yeah, you know, with the outdoor festivals and. It is I mean, cool, but then, like, for my genre, like, our genre, like, yeah. you guys aren't as heavy now, but, like, like, if you're playing heavy music and people are socially distancing, it's, like, shitty. It, like, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's just yeah, not going to. it doesn't work. Can't have a socially distanced mosh pit. Yeah. Yeah, that, the, uh, the Coheed shows that we did, a lot of those venues were uh, seated. Right. So, like yeah, yeah. even the front row folks were sitting down and that was just like this is so weird it is super strange dude i, I saw you guys in it's atlanta like <clears throat> with intervals that was the last time i saw you guys um at the uh and it had like half called? seating and i loved it it was such a cool vibe yeah, yeah that venue was really cool it was the something playhouse yeah i had never even heard of it and i've like been going to atlanta for shows my whole life so yeah, weird. I, we, that was the first time we'd play there. Eric knew it just because he he lives there. But uh, yeah, that was a great venue. That was awesome. Um, that whole tour was was really cool. Yeah, I can only imagine two bands on the package. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Just yeah. two bands. I remember leaving that night, and be like, man, that sounds sick. And then like, in three <laughs> weeks, I was about to leave for like a six band package or some shit, and I was oh. like, man. <laughs> oh god. You guys were like all just chill and happy in the green room. Like had all your, like each person had a couch. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. It's six bands. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to like, uh, summer slaughter. There's like what? Mm, that's, that's the big one. Yeah. We did, stupid like we that. did summer slaughter, I guess the year before last now. Whew, what a, Oh, did, did you guys do the whole run? We did. Six and a half weeks, it? or maybe seven weeks. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna. It was a tour. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I hear you, bro. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was reminiscing, um, on our tour that we did with Tesseract. It was uh, you guys, and Tesseract and us and Sky Harbor. Sky Harbor. Yep, that band. That yeah. band's sick. Yeah, I got. Sky Harbor, yeah, super sick. Yeah, I missed that tour, but we were in like a super awkward place as a band. I constantly look back on that tour and just like wish. It was like the only tour. No, it was Ian's last tour, and like Ian only lasted an EP. Oh, that's right. And then we just have like these two huge sections of our band's timeline, and then that was just like in that little awkward. Yep. Um, but like Tesseract's one of my favorite bands of all time. So sick to tour with. And I, ever since you guys put out language, you guys have been up there. So it's like, we do, we left that tour and we had like vocalist issues and we were like, man, are the, either of those bands ever going to take us out again? Cause that was awkward. <laughs> um, yeah, that, no, but you guys, you guys seem to have made the recovery and, and oh yeah, bounce for back sure. fully. Yep. It was weird for a second, yeah, but we awesome. are very happy with where we're at now, especially like with the, the material we're sitting on. We're like, <laughs> you know how when you're in a band and it's like weird to like your own music, you know, that feeling. Mm. I think I know what that feels like for like two minutes and then, and then I hate my music. <laughs> right. That's how it normally is. But with this album, I think I'm actually just stoked and that's cool. Dude, that's so cool. I and I, I can't wait to hear that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it's all very in the vein of Snowblood, that single we put out, but I don't know. It's just like it might even have Sick. something to do with the pandemic too. Like just the idea yeah. of doing anything band related or releasing anything just feels cooler right now than I think normally. Yeah. 
That's that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to our manager uh, a couple days ago about the the possibility and inevitability of doing some sort of um, streaming concert. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this yet, but whatever. (laughs) Uh, And and I was just like, yes, like I've never been more stoked to like get into a room and, and right. reverse with yeah with these guys who I hang out with way too much. Yep. And, um yeah. I'm, Dude, I'm, it's the I'm opposite for us. To... Uh we did some music videos I guess a couple months yeah. back now. And like I hadn't seen the dudes in a year. Any of them. We barely talk. Oh wow. Yeah, it's so weird. Um so like if we if we got together for something like that, it would be like, dude have you been Matt? Like, it's just like seeing someone from high school. It's like super weird. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nowadays we all live in different States and stuff. So we, yeah. you know, 2020, we haven't seen each other at all. Um, uh, well, I, I mean, we were on tour in March when, when shit hit the fan. So that was the last time I saw those guys. Um, we've been doing like zoom meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, we, just we to keep you know we like need the to record. Be, <laughs> we need to be way better about that, but we just don't. Yeah, I mean, we could be better about it. Like, we 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 were on the ball for a while, but um, you know, people drift into other other things, and I think Eric with just the had a um, kid, so oh well, congrats to him. Um, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Uh, with you guys doing the streams every Wednesday, I feel like that's a good cohesion glue. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're sort of uh forced to uh get into a zoom meeting there and yeah <laughs> and Which hash some stuff out. Sometimes that's what you need, you know. Yeah. yeah. Especially during times like this. Like it can be very unmotivating. Like I just hopped in like a For marketing sure. call with like a team of people and like part of me in the back of my mind is like, what's it matter? <laughs> like we we can't go anywhere anyway. I'm just being stupid. Right, but then at the yeah, other yeah. half of me, you know, Jesse moved to L.A. this year. So like, he moved to Nashville a couple oh of years God. ago. We grew up in Birmingham together. That's how we've known each other for so long. But he just moved to L.A. So like, who knows when I'll see that guy again? So like, um, talking to him on the phone just felt LA. good. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, that's crazy, dude. L.A. Yeah. That's. Why? What, what's he doing? I don't know. He's well. He he definitely wants to like ghost write and produce. So on that aspect of it. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah. And then we All have right. a we have a friend who grew up around the area who records. I can't remember the company's name. It's a huge company, but he he's out in LA and does work. So he could probably get work through there and stuff. Like, there's definitely opportunities. I don't see yeah. the the like the attraction in it personally. I mean, I I like being in Birmingham just because like, well, when we are touring, I like coming back to somewhere kind of like controlled and tame, you know. Right. Um, right. Yeah. L. A. Sounds like it's it's off its rocker in twenty twenty. Yeah. Just Everywhere it does like, though. Well, like fires and shit. That's, yeah, yeah. That's that's next level. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that stuff is insane. Uh, do you have any other passions besides the photography going on? Anything you've discovered through this quarantine? Mm. Uh, zucchini bread. Ooh, what is it? Wait. wait. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Just explain <laughs> zucchini bread to me before I sound dumb. Honestly, I have no idea how to even describe it. Um, I don't know how it is made. My my fiance makes it. Um, but I guess you take some zucchini and you do some stuff to it and then you bake it and then you have zucchini bread. So there's actually no bread, it's just zucchini. No, there's there's hella bread. It's a uh, All right, I'll, I'll it's google a this later. Of carbs for sure. Okay. <laughs> I make a lot of pasta and crap, uh, so that's sick though. Yeah, yeah. Well, like right now, it's funny you say that. We just—I'm still vegetarian. I—I I have been for a while now, and so is my girlfriend. Yeah. 
we just got mm. our very first vegan, like all vegan food truck in town. Really? Needless to say, we are keeping that place thriving with the amount of money we're spending there. <laughs> so that that's, that's, that's probably really cool, man. yeah, it's one of my passions for sure. Eating fake meat, nice from a from a truck. <laughs> very sick, man. Yeah, I actually I might have put uh, zucchini bread higher in, in its uh, in, in a rank than I should have um, during quarantine. Well. But let me explain a little a little better here. So like during quarantine, I definitely was eating lots of zucchini bread and, and other assorted carbs. And I probably gained maybe 10 pounds. I don't know. It was, okay. it was getting rough there for a sec. Yeah. It was, you know. Um, and at some point, I just was like, I have to, I have to make a change because I just didn't, I didn't feel good. I wasn't sleeping good. Um, so like instantly I actually stopped drinking coffee. I don't know why that was like one of my, one of my ways to deal with, with life, but I stopped Ugh. drinking coffee. It would, that's not um, how I would deal with life. That's how I deal. I with, know. I don't, I honestly, yeah. this like now, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I had slightly no, lost my I mean, mind I know bit. there's benefits. Um, yeah. 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 So you're they're like, they're definitely, you're is. probably more naturally energetic, right? That's that's the idea uh, anyway, and I, and I think after a while I was a little more just naturally, you know, um, fueled up, um, and I was sleeping better. That was the thing that I that I noticed was that I was sleeping a lot better. I felt like I was like remembering my dreams more, which was which is a thing that I've noticed as I've gotten older. I'm like never remembering my dreams when I wake up. Huh. Um, but uh, I have since. Um, began chugging coffee by the gallons uh, again. So, <laughs> okay. so we're, we're good there. <laughs> okay. Um, and so and another thing that I was getting back into um, towards the end of quarantine really and, and into now was um, intermittent fasting and yeah. running. Oh, and running. So I was wow. Doing a, yeah. Dude, I've I been suck doing a lot at of running. That. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've started oh. biking a lot more since quarantine. I nice. really like biking. Nice. Yeah. And there's like a, we have like a path that coincidentally stops at an ice cream place halfway through, <laughs> but we do it. We bike it. Um, Love that. I, yeah, I just, I've nice never, man. dude, I played soccer growing up and I even hated running then. Like I would be like, can I just, I'll be goalkeeper. <laughs> like, uh, I've always sucked what, at running. What is it about running that you don't like? Um, I have a really, like, even when I work out, like when I like lift weights and stuff, I have a really hard time controlling my breathing. Um, okay. And I'll just like find myself like, like having a panic attack halfway through a run. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're just, you're just not breathing and then you start panicking. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I, I can relate to that in, in okay. some ways. Yeah. Like, like you, like you're, you're not thinking about it and when you do start thinking about it, you, you realize that you're well, like breathing like this, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it like escalates and then you're just like dead and, in the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay. So I guess this is the best way to word it. When I play a show on tour in the summer, we'll say that the amount of cardio I'm expending during that show is far greater than it would be if I was running, but running sucks way, way harder. <laughs> It's so like it's. I just do it bad. I'm just bad at running. I just yeah. never. Yeah. You, you know what's what's helped me sometimes with running is um. This, maybe, this might be a little too nerdy, but running to a metronome. Whoa. Um. Uh, yeah, because I I found that that like running to music was was helpful and and I enjoyed it more. Um, and then sometimes it was just too much to like try to keep up with music. Uh, all the time so i tried um setting up like um i don't know there's a few metronome apps where you can like automate a metronome yeah and you can like and so like i'll do a run where where i'm starting at like i don't know 140 bpm and then i'll i'll um, automate it up to 160 over like 10 15 minutes or something like that whoa um 
I don't always do the I don't always do it that way. Sometimes I'll just set it to one forty six or whatever and just just well, go for it. Okay, and isn't like a super healthy way of running like if you do more like a sporadic like jog to sprint type vibe too? Can you automate a click to go like one hundred up and down? Yeah, because I feel like that would be that's like some next level training. I feel like that's a good question. I feel like with with something that um sort of like dialed in and, and figured out. I would just like get into Cubase or something and make, yeah, and make, yeah, it, yeah. make a click track. But they say that's the best type of running is like, like a Did jog. They say that? Yeah, because it's supposed to. Uh, it has something to do with like cardio and it's the essence of itself. Like it's all about raising your heart rate, and it's easier to raise your heart rate when you do more sporadic movements opposed to, like your heart can adjust to running at a pace. Yeah. So like when you first start running, yeah, your heart's going to be like, oh, what's happening? I have to pump more blood. But then after you're running at that same pace for 10 minutes, your heart chills out because your body kind of regulates. That's what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that's pretty much the summary of of what what cardio is is sick for. Um, But I'm going to have to try that, like jogging and sprinting and jogging and sprinting because I, I, for whatever reason I've gotten stuck into like just going at a consistent pace and then maybe at the end bumping it up a bit and just busting well, I mean, out it's the, like the last it, half mile, whatever it's all at the end of the day, you're still exercising, which like true. Yeah. True. I just know like that's actually kind of why I enjoy biking because especially around here, you're going to hit Hills and really random points. And Oh yeah. Like there's some points of this, this, like little circuit we've created for ourselves around our neighborhood where it like whoops me. And then we hit a downhill and I'm like, yeah. <gasps> like I'm just stoked that I'm just rolling. <laughs> I will forever be a skinny yeah. fat ass dude. It's uh, like <laughs> always actually I gained dude, a, I, I gained I totally a lot of relate. Yeah, yeah. 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 I gained a lot of weight this quarantine, but literally got COVID and dropped a lot of weight. So, Oh really? Yeah. Had, so what was your experience with COVID? Did it did it whoop your ass or it destroyed it take it easy me? You? No, it did not take it easy. Really? No. Um, I worked. It's so stupid. I worked one day. Like I like I went into quarantine since like April, right? Yeah. I didn't go out. I didn't hang out with people. I didn't. I wasn't an idiot. I didn't go to bars and shit. And then finally, the coffee shop I work at opens back up. I work one day and I get fever sweats that night. Which oh my God. I know that I didn't get it from work. Like how COVID works is I got it like weeks prior or whatever. But like mm-hmm. it, it was just, it felt so demoralizing to finally get back to a life. And then the night of like, oh dude. And like, I was just like, there's no way this is happening. I don't have COVID. Like it's probably just like a seasonal thing. And then I got tested and I was yeah. positive. Um it was gnarly, dude. It sucked. Yeah. Uh did you have the whole difficulty breathing thing? I didn't until afterwards. And I don't know if maybe I just always did, but like the fever and the headache and all that kind of like shattered it a little bit. Uh, It wasn't until after I like went through, I had to go back into quarantine for two weeks, but like real quarantine, like I couldn't shop for groceries. Like I was literally just like bedridden in my guest bedroom for two weeks. It sucked so hard. Um, Damn dude. And then after that two weeks went uh, over, did your girlfriend get it too? She did, but she never showed a single symptom. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but she even had to quarantine for two weeks still just because she tested positive. So she just took yep. a little vacation. Um, yep. I had my birthday through that time. So that sucked too. I was like, this, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so th- after the two weeks went back, I went back to work and it like, I worked for like four hours. I was like, <gasps> can I go home? Like, I was like, I was just like not hanging. Like it just, I wasn't. Damn. And then after about a week of that, are you, are you good now? Though? Yeah, I'm back a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, solid. That's good to hear. But it's definitely no Dude, joke. I think I, I think I either got it twice or I had it 
just for a long time with very mild symptoms. It's kind of hard to tell what, which was which. I mean, either way, I had fairly mild symptoms. Um, I think it was the last couple days that Contorts was out on that um, on that Devon tour. Um, I was definitely feeling something in my chest, and I was like, "This okay? This is I'm dying." Yeah, because <laughs> you it's, know, the, it's a shitty around feeling. that time was like, yeah, around that time it was like. Obviously, we, we we knew way less than we know now. About right. It. Well, even and, that's the thing too. It's um, like I still don't feel like we know that much about it because me and my girlfriend, two people living in the same house, having two completely different experiences. It's so weird. Yeah, that, and that's yeah, that's the crazy thing is how differently it 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 just like it whoops some people, and then other people are just like, yeah, I couldn't smell stuff for a day and. That was it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never but, lost that. But thing, yeah, I was, thankfully. I had that for a day. Okay. I and mean, it was the weirdest, it was the weirdest thing ever. And I was telling my fiance, I was like, I can't, I can't taste anything. And she was like, you're full of shit. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. It's dude, like, I it's, seriously. it's one of those symptoms where you're like, to what degree? But I've heard, uh, another guy that I know from, uh, from my job, uh, he like hardcore lost sense of smell and taste and yeah. he has like a newborn baby and he said that like his friend would be over and be like do you need to change her diaper and he's like I can't smell it like like his baby oh, would just no. shit himself and he couldn't tell <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's that sucks but it's kind of funny yeah but it, that totally sucks yeah did he get it back or was is he one of the I think he one of the long haulers he he's Definitely lost the smell for a long time, like comparatively. Yeah. Uh, I think he might be getting it back now, but it's so hard to tell. It's crazy. Man. It, yeah. But I couldn't it's imagine really the respiratory problems on tour because shows are like, like I said, oh, cardio yeah. within themselves. That's gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a no, it's a non starter right there. Um, yeah. I think. Yeah, from what I experienced with the the shortness of breath stuff, because I had some of that too, like I I couldn't even imagine like being a singer and having to be up there. Oh, dude, yeah, screaming no into way. a microphone and count yeah. me out. And you know, a lot of folks are are having the thing where they're having like what looks like permanent damage from this thing, and it's like that's that's the worst thing ever. Is that I don't know, like huge chunk of our population is going to be like just permanently hobbled or, you know, indefinitely, you know, hopefully it from things that I've seen, it seems like the folks who seem to have permanent damage, maybe it's not as permanent as they thought. Right. It was be, yeah. I think it just but, lasts but longer. It's still going to take them. Yeah. So. I, th I think it just lasts longer than people are expected. But like, it, like we said, no one knows, no one knows, you know, no one knows yet. It's just like, it's yeah. so new. It's wild. Um, okay, let's dive back into some gear talk because we kind of started out that way, but we didn't talk about the fact that yeah. you're an Ibanez player as well as I am. Yep. Um, as a matter of fact, for all of the watching, for all of those who are watching and are familiar with Jesse and my guitars, we both ripped the idea of throwing pit guards on Ibanez from Robbie. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Dude. one right there, the 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 my semi custom, that's like super. Yeah. Here, I'll bring it in the camera. I was actually looking at that, um, that guitar the other day because you posted something about it. So. Oh yeah, yeah, the the black one. That's right. Yeah. Well, all mine are black. Let's be real. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's actually really funny. It's like I was so proud and stoked on this build and this guitar. And then Tim Henson released like this exact gu guitar as his signature. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And Mateo yeah. Sasato has like the same guitar. There's a third. Someone else did it. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck me. I guess it's I'm not that cool anyway. <laughs> um, oh, Fuck Jared Dines. Guys. Jared Dines' new Ernie Ball is this exact. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It looks sick, dude. You you were pro you must have been the first though, right? 
Uh, Mateus, I think, was actually. Okay. I'll go. I'll say that publicly. I won't. I won't claim it. Which you're familiar with him, right? So what's your? Um, not not a whole lot. Okay, he's he's basically like, he was like an Instagram phenomenon. Like he's just an insane guitar player. Um, let me look him up. M a t e u s. Um, but basically, like you'll like the first couple of videos you watch, you'll get it. Like it's just that type of guitar playing. Uh, he has he a real familiar. He has a custom sir. He's a sir player. Um, okay. And I oh, kind of this telly that he has. Yeah, I kind of ripped it from him, but like he was like my whole thing with that vibe, which I, I appreciated from you. Like your, I still remember your natural wood Ibanez with like the pearl tuning keys and the pick guard. Oh yeah, yeah. That guitar is so sick, but I like. A very metal guitar with classic inspiration. Yeah, I hear you, dude. That's like my whole vibe. You talking about this one? Mm. No, I maybe. I think it was like actually just natural brown wood, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, where is this one? Oh. So solid, dude. Actually, I actually I had the pick guard swapped out. To yeah, you went to a gray. Wood. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. Both of those guitars look so weird sick. to me. Yeah, I, you know what it what it was for me with the the pick guard thing was like, um, early, um, early corn stuff. They they had yeah, the monk, they had a the bunch of customs guitars, with yeah. yeah all their they had these like matte finished um. RG7s with with the pick cards and those guitars just looked so sick. Yeah. I was like that's I mean that's those the, dude the one. those mine Jesse has a couple of pick cards now. Those are all like my favorite Ibanez I've seen. It's so funny. But like yeah, obviously to each their own. Um yeah. I actually really enjoy yeah. the new FRs they're putting out with like the Gibson type uh oh, black dude, block yeah. yeah, fret markers. Those are really cool. It'd be cool to throw like a telly pit guard on one of those too. Like just take it to the next level, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> um But you've yeah. been you've been with Ibanez What's the whole the, time uh... I've known you, I think. Yeah, man. Um We've been with Ibanez for I think like ten years now. Wow. And yeah. the A and R rep that we both work with is named Mike Arrigo. He's awesome. He's like Probably the main reason I love Ibanez now. Just Mike is so awesome, but he speaks so highly of you guys. Really? Yeah. That's, that's sick. Dude, Mike loves you guys so much. Yeah, Mike is the best. He's sick. Dude, it, that dude literally just slings guitars. Yeah, well, so when I first joined up with Ibanez, they still had some of the other dudes. And then, like, Right around when I grew as an artist, uh, he like took over everything. Dude. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Super crazy, man. Yeah. That Is poor he, that poor they, guy didn't know they what they used to yeah. have uh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, was he like assumed responsibility for everything so many bands. Like just S- Steve Vai, yeah. Joe Satriani. Paul Gilbert, every like huge name dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right because the they had they had Mike Taft there for a while. Yes, that's the that and, was like the main I think dude. He, I think. Mike, yeah, and I think Taft had been there for a real long time. I think he had been working with Vi and those guys since like the beginning or something like that. Insane. And uh, I think that I think Taft sat at Gretsch now or something. I forget where he went, but he's still doing the thing and. Probably killing it. Um, oh yeah, I'm sure he is. Yeah. Um. Okay. What's so, your favorite Ivan is that that you've gotten? Dude, it's so well. Uh, my six string actually. Really? Um. Yeah. So, it's super stock model. I think I saw this one but, on your Instagram. Yeah, it's just that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's natural maple pearl, but because they for yep. whatever reason they put black hardware on it. And then when I put gold hardware on it, it just became an entirely new guitar. Like, I love this guitar. 
<laughs> nice. And like, it's just, it's everything. I really like the the bird's eye maple fretboard because that's kind of new for yep. me. Love that. Um, but it's just so easy to play. It's just one of those Ibanez. It's like Ibanez's are really playable guitars, which is what I've always loved about them. But sometimes, yeah. and I know you can attest to this because you've had a lot of models in and out of your hands. Every once in a while, you get an Ibanez in your hands that's just perfect. Like, just the neck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this is just one of yep. them. This is just one of those guitars that, like, every time I pick it up, I'm like, man, that thing's sick. So, these two are just like that. Yep. This one... I think this one also has a bird's eye maple board. And this one is also super stock. It's got, well, the bridge is, oh. is uh, updated to a. Wait, uh, let me see the, the front of that one second. a little better. Is that a seven string a too? On it, maybe. No, it's a six. Oh, okay. So um, the, the cut, there's, I think that same colorway they made in a seven string with a tremolo. Yeah, That's yeah. what that guitar is. Oh, really? It's a modded you out. You put a solid finish. Custom painted uh, guitar. That model. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's yours. Is the seven six five two? Dude, I will HM never something. ever remember an Ibanez model name. You can't even. <laughs> you can miss me with that, dude. <laughs> Some of them I remember just because. I don't know for whatever reason that they got the letters and numbers right. In it. <laughs> this, Somehow this is that right it. combo. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna start and name. So that's what I'm gonna start renaming all my passwords to like my socials to Ibanez model numbers, and no one will still get them because they're so confusing. <laughs> bro, what? What? Catch me hacking you, bro. <laughs> that RG twenty one two F Z nine. Um. Yeah. So this one has. Oh, I'm spacing the name of this bridge. It's the hip shot. I think they actually call it the the IB or the IBI or something like that. It's but not it's, the Gibraltar. It's nice and rounded, so it, no, it's it's a hip shot something Big. or other. It's made out of some metal that's supposed to be more resonant. Um, okay, that was real dope. And then these are my custom uh, Mojo Tone pickups. What? Let's talk Super about that. Sick. You got custom pickups? Yeah, dude. So this is a this set. Well, actually, the set on this guitar, um, it used to have a set called the Level Heads. Okay. And that's that's what this is, and they at some point discontinued that pickup, and which was what I was using on a lot of my guitars. Yeah, that's so a shitty like, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, could we just take that pickup and maybe make a few tweaks to it and and see what it sounds like and they're like yeah and so i've i've got most of my guitars have that set in it some of them uh, have i get what you're saying that's sick though some more yeah yeah um uh, yeah love just, mojo tone just real quick they're passive five way select or what yep uh passive five way a couple of them have coil taps on them um and then one of them I don't have in here at the moment has a, a piezo built into one of these bridges that's on this guitar. Oh, that's so sick. Which which has a coil tap on the piezo, which is a really cool sound like <laughs> blending the All right, dude. Like <laughs> hey, have you played a piezo, dude? Yeah, I have. It's cool. There's they're sick and yeah. and I, I like you would never think to run that into like high gain sounds, but yeah, it, right. It's got a really cool sound to it. Yeah. Um, especially if you blend it with like a co like if you were to throw this into a coil tap position, like the second and the third position, and then blend that with the piezo. Ooh, yeah, sounds sick. Cool. Especially with cleans, I'm sure too. Oh yes, oh yeah. yes. And then this one is this is one of the ones I couldn't tell you the name. I, uh, I remember that a, model being released. I called it the coffee table yeah <laughs> but that is also this, like you know how like an ibanez in person too this happens a lot an ibanez in person versus like their stock photo images are like night and day especially when it comes to like the natural wood ones it's it's weird how that happens yeah 
I don't, I don't know what it is, but yeah. So you look at some of them on the website and you're like, all right. It was, well, it's, uh, it's actually so funny. So that six string, I looked at it on the website. Yeah. I was like, that shit's so ugly. I don't want that. <laughs> and then I, I needed a six string for tour. Like I just had to have one. And I asked Mike to get that one. I was like, just put like some, I don't know. Oh, so the pickups in that one are actually passive EMGs. Oh, cool. And I love them, but they don't make them for seven strings, of course. Like, why would they? <laughs> <laughs> so I love those pickups and I had them sent those pickups and I was like, I just need those in a six string. I don't care what you do with the guitar. I just need a six string. So Mike did it upon himself to like yeah. match all the hardware and do like a, some stuff with that guitar and it's my favorite ibanez still to this day it's so cool how that works out nice dude and people even I've see that one played th- and they're like that what model is that i can't find that anywhere and then i send them the shitty like <laughs> stock photo it's just it, funny it's the model that that you overlooked that one time that yeah. it was available on the website it's probably discontinued now right yeah probably like seven years ago and they're never going to bring it back and Right, yeah. I'm not bitter though. Yeah, I think Cam got <laughs> I think Cam got one of those and and uh that, yeah, that, that one sounds great. Yeah. That that bird's eye maple is like it's so spanky. That's a home run right yeah, there. It's that so neck. good. Yeah. Uh, that guitar is is it ash or is it something else? I think it is ash, yeah. It's a it's a crazy light guitar. Okay. It's also easy to scuff up, but because it's maple yep, pearl, yep. it's like whatever like who cares there's yeah. literally already like chunks of wood missing out of it anyway so like who cares if you like knock a <laughs> and you're right because the the um actual wood grain is exposed on that guitar right mm-hmm. yep yeah, yeah. that's what's cool about that one it, it is really cool yeah nice nice and filled with sweat. dirt and sweat and shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes wow so you got so you play ibanez you got custom pickups that's super sick um, I guess we're I mean, not playing live, but you you already you already broke down like your last live rig. It's the um, I kind of I kind of told you some of it, um, but let me I can break it down more if if you want to know. We don't have to break the whole thing down, but just tell me your favorite parts about it. I guess like what separates it and what you're stoked about. So we talked about doing the the IR thing. Um, so that's cool. Um, so I'm, so it's really, the rig is kind of a hybrid of like, um, analog and digital. So I've got a few pedals that, that I had on my board that I was really into. This is one of them right here. The, uh, the Empress germ drive, okay. which is a germanium drive pedal. Um, I've never really been huge on germanium, but I've never um, even heard of them. percent. Um, Empress or or Germanium. Germanium. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was a thing like in classic rock. More, I th- I feel like okay. it was, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the sound of like fuzz pedals, really, okay. uh, or a lot of fuzz pedals. Um, so this pe- this pedal is like, if you wanted an overdrive to be just thicker, yeah, like a would, like this... a throw a fuzz on a chorus type vibe, and it just makes your guitar super fat. Not not Maybe, a chorus yeah. effect, but the chorus of a song, like where you want like a really fast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yes. sorry. I Absolutely. Was, yeah. You you got me there. We were in nerd mode. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to suck you out of the the effect world. Well, yeah. it's like it's like a very so, uh, Creed type vibe thing to do, right? Like you, you when you play these fat power chords in your chorus, you throw like a a fuzz and it just like actually fills in a lot of the low end i think is like the mentality behind it yeah yep yep yeah so i was i was really using that and let's see where well it's around here somewhere but and i'm sure you've seen it the uh uh horizon uh precision drive yeah i played that at nam it's crazy yep yeah yeah so i was using that for for the riffing stuff so like exoplanet songs and some of the earlier stuff and even a lot of the newer stuff if i needed it to be you know an overdrive like a tube screamer or something i was using that yeah because it has a gate built in too which is insane like dude yeah it's so the gate on that thing is dope yeah Yeah. i have Um, the or i should have the flux on the way soon 
What is that thing? It's a it's a reverb delay combo in oh, cool. in a pedal casing this big. And then there's okay. there's a flux button. It, I could be wrong saying this, but it just like you can swell. Like you can like if you have like an ambient lead, you can just like completely swell it into like an arena type reverb with the physical button. Oh cool. So like if you're play, if you want like regular reverb delay, you can just play like like how my lead tone is is basically my rhythm tone really wet basically. Right. And then if I have like an insanely like just dripping just single note hold, you can flux but like flux button it and it just like spaces out. It's oh, pretty dude, cool. That's thick. I think there's a video of Pliny playing with it and it's cool like what he's doing. But yeah. I don't I don't know where I would be able to find it now. Have you seen the um I saw Aaron from Intervals using this. It's the uh Digitech freak out i think is what it's called or Mm-mm, i haven't seen it it's, um when you were describing that the flux with how it, it you hold it i guess you hold it down and then it swells or something like yes, that yeah so yeah this digitech pedal is it's meant to be like a like a feedback generator whoa so like you could hit a chord and then and then hold down the the freak out pedal and it just gives you feedback you want just instantly and I, don't, I don't really know how it works but god um, that's so sick so I saw him doing it and he would, you know, he's doing his lead stuff and then he gets to the end of the lead and he throws on the freak out and then he's just like, just riding it out. And it's just like, oh, wow, like, yes, that is, that. that's super sick. That yeah. is super sick. Um, so that's, that's definitely like, that's a wish list item right there. There you go. Um, what else did I have going it's on? It's funny you say wish list. Like right now, if I don't have it on all the time, but like if I'm playing like League of Legends or like whatever video game I'm playing at the time, there's like a little donation thing and it's pedal board. It's like if you want to fuel my pedal board, <laughs> that's my wish list. Pedal right board there. fun. Yeah. I like that. I need to start doing yeah. that. That Twitch life, dude. <clears throat> um, there, there's really one other thing I would mention in, in uh, the live rig, and that's just the, all the stuff that the Line 6 Helix does. Um, and the way I was running it on the tour was, uh, I had a path in the helix that was in front of the amp. And then I had another path that, that was in the effects loop of the amp effectively. Um, but, and I, I had a wall in, in, in front of my amp in the helix, which I like, there's one band ever in my life that I thought used, well, two bands that I thought used a wall in a way that was like, cool. And why was um, so it like Black Alice Label Society? <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't. But but now that you now that you mentioned that, yes. <laughs> Alice in Chains is like a top. Uh, it's funny how like years have gone by and like more modern metal has gone. My appreciation for Alice in Chains has grown. Oh like, dude, yeah. Yeah, they were so sick. Absolutely. And and their new records are just as good as the old stuff, I feel like. Yeah, which is super which is rare for 90s bands, yeah. obviously. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And the fact that they've gone through a singer change and they still sound like exactly the same. I mean, it kind of goes to show like really how much of the sound of that band came from the, the entire band. Right. And it wasn't, you know, just one or two guys. Yeah. So that's that's really cool to see a band. <laughs> Sorry, what was the other band? For your wah the other band we were t- I was talking about bands who used wah pedals successfully in my opinion um uh, the <laughs> the other band was uh glass jaw oh okay wow yeah yeah so that dude did you ever get into that band no i've never listened to much of it at all okay you should check out uh this record they put out a few years ago now it was called uh, material control okay um and i can remember that yeah um, just the way that that guy uses wah pedals, he kind of does like the like the tremolo lead thing, but he's he's like he's slowly doing the filter sweep with the with the wah, and yeah. just the way he just the way that he places those leads into songs is yeah, so cool. Yeah, that me. is sick. So it's like wah has such a poor taste in my mouth, and always has because Dude, of some bands <laughs> like yeah. Metallica and Black Label Society and um, 
But it's like when you watch a guitar player who knows how to navigate one, it's it's an experience. It's cool. It's like Yeah. Um and I feel like like John Petrucci has used one. Yeah, it's play. funny. We he's, were just he's, talking he's about watching like playthroughs from him the other day like earlier and uh the other day I was watching yeah. one and I was like, What does he use a wah in this part? Like you can't sometimes you can't even tell he has one, but he uses it tastefully and expressively and it's like Right. It's really cool. And and he's voiced his wah pedal in a way that that works for the way he plays and is voiced in, with no stupid frequencies that you want right. that you wouldn't want to have in a wah. Because right. I think a lot of like just stock like crybaby, it's just like just nah. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's like something yeah. that I could probably want to get into playing with, but like I just don't know yet. You know, I'll get there you should just you should just get one and like see if you can incorporate it in some way in some weird creative way that, that maybe i don't know sparks some i'm sure yeah, yeah yeah i'm sure that i can find something i'm good at that yeah. but then i'll have like that one wall riff that i just don't know what to do with for the rest of my life you know <laughs> like i got this one real one sick wall riff. riff man it's cool dude yeah 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 so and have you messed around with just any like expression pedal stuff within the Kemper? Not much, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really kind of how I stumbled onto the wall stuff in the Helix was I was trying to I needed to for for whatever reason I needed to automate some delay in a, in one part of one song. No, yeah, I, I'm familiar and with those. I, I had to buy an expression pedal just so I could do it and once I stuck that thing on my board, I was like, what else can I do with this? Yeah, because you don't want to just use it like, for that one thing, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> and then, so, yeah, I started messing around with Waz and, like, um, uh, ring modulators and all, all the weird stuff in the Helix that I never would have touched. Yeah, and someone literally just, just chat, Wa into ring mod equals instant success. It's so weird you just said that. <laughs> he, he must be from the yes, contortionist yeah. stream. <laughs> <clears throat> Are there folks in the chat? Are they? Are they? Oh yeah, we yeah we've just had people just chiming in. I I typically just ignore them until the end. Then I incorporate their love. That's that's probably the best way to do it because I find when I pay too close attention to the chat, I just like get distracted. Well, yeah, I mean, there's like there's like a couple different styles of streaming for me. Like while I'm doing the podcast, like you're my attention. You know what I mean? You're my guest. Like this is about Robbie and his life as a guitar player so like chat is Thanks. not my priority yeah but when i'm screaming at video games that. i'll read everything chat has to say yeah. <laughs> what do you play on on uh right on okay streaming? so we do have a big section of this podcast that's dedicated to video games because ultimately we're okay. on twitch and this is first and foremost a video game platform in my opinion um yeah. these days i'm pretty much just playing league of legends which is like super sell outy because it's just a huge like Twitch game, I guess. Yeah. Um and like I'm I'm now I've kind of gotten like a little side gig during quarantine where I actually compile highlights from streamers for the game. Really? Yeah. That's I, interesting. Yeah, so basically like I can't like shout it out directly yet, but I basically like if ESPN had a section for a specific video game. I'm the like highlight generator, content creator and stuff. So, okay. So I'm very like cool, man. Yeah, and then last year my birthday was in the same city on tour that they had the um finals for like the national pro esports team and stuff. So I went to that I went to my first ever esports like live event. Ooh, it's sick. It's crazy. Damn. It sold out Little Caesars Arena in Detroit when we were playing like the shelter down the street. And, oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So I went to that and it, like that kind of changed my view on video games a little bit too. Like how there's like actual like monetization within it and like it's a huge community, even though like as gamers, we always feel like the sheltered kids in our bedroom talking to your friends online. But like when you go to an arena of gamers, it's really, it's a weird feeling. Oh, dude, I can't even imagine. But yeah, awesome, so man. I pretty much just play League right now. Um, do you play video games? So 
I do now. Yeah. Uh, since quarantine, I I got back into video games. Uh, so I've I've started playing uh, Warzone. <laughs> yes. Which, which also feels kind of sellouty, but. <laughs> yes. Uh, but all, uh, Billy O is playing it, and uh, Jordan's playing it a little bit, and I haven't really played yet with Jordan, but I've been playing with Bill a little bit, and and Joe. Joe's been playing it as well. I would um, play Warzone just to hear Billy on mic, probably. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> I miss that dude. I know. I I need to get him on some streams playing Warzone because yeah. he is he's a character. A man. character. That's the exact word I was gonna use. Yeah. Sweetest human um, alive for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah what is build. what is your Twitch? My Twitch is r underscore baka. All right, I just linked just that to the chat. That. It linked to something, so. <laughs> At twitch.tv slash r underscore baka. That goes somewhere. Yep, that's the one. So yeah, I got a handful of streams up on there. Most of it is like me oh. writing stuff or me retracking. Um, is it the Contortionist I, band? Is that the the band's? I think so. Let me double check that. I should link that. So tomorrow I'm going to be on their stream. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yep, that's the one. Cool. Yep, for anyone who wants to, from my area, come see that what's cool about this podcast too is because i put it on youtube and the chat is in the layout these links no matter when you watch they're on the video i guess okay so so you've got the the live chat in your in your uh obs thing or, or whatever yeah. you're using um so warzone what other i mean did you grow up playing video games were you a gamer like in at your core before um I guess yes and no. I when I was when Joe and I were young, we we had a a sixty four, and that that was like the beginning of the the video game stuff. Um, played lots of like Star Fox and and Smash yeah, Bros. And, the classics, dude. Yep. Um. Let's see. Sixty four was my first two, I think. And there were like 64 hidden gems that like really sculpted me as like a gamer. Like I always forget the name of it, but there was like a shooter where you could like turn into a beast or something. And like, it was so weird. I can't even begin to See, actually yep. describe what it was. <laughs> Just some sick game that is yeah. no longer in Far your, in the your memories memory. of yeah. my childhood. Um, we Joe and I were not allowed to play shooters. Okay. At least at at the at the age of sixty four. So, um, we we kind of missed out on a. Well, when we were at our friend's house, we we were all <laughs> yeah. about it. But, yeah. <laughs> um. So we, I think there was like a whatever that James Bond game was. Double seven. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lots lots of that. Um, that is always like a classic. Like that's. So many people started out their shoot like FPS careers on Goldeneye. Like it's just yep. like a, yeah, 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 such a sick game. I remember, th- I remember like being that age, seeing that game. I remember thinking like, this is like the best looking game I've ever seen. Like this is this looks so good and it's so much fun. And then you look back at it now and it's Ugh. just like, really, so, this is what that game. <laughs> this is like. what I liked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's cool though because it really shows me? you like how. I guess encapsulating those worlds were, especially for like you as a young age. Like I yeah. had those games for sure. Um, yep. So did you guys expand beyond that? Like, were you ever into the PlayStation or Xbox worlds or? So we had a PS2. I think we missed out on the PS1, which I think kind of coexisted with the 64. Right? Yeah, yeah. So like, as as a gener There's... like a video like a console generation. You went from the 64 to the PS2, which I think yep. was also yeah. pretty common too. Yeah. So PS2 games that we were into were like, let's see, I remember Gran Turismo. I remember uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Oh yeah. So you've always you've always the... played games. 
Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Um, that's all I can really remember for PS2. PS3. We had a PS3 as well. Games I really remember from that that really got me were um, the, the uh, what, what was that called? It was the uh, the Nathan Drake series. Ooh, Did you play any of those? Uh, no. Uncharted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uncharted series. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mine, so actually, think, someone like, just first... said in chat, Dead Space. Oh, yes, dude. I dude, almost forgot about those that. Those games. Space. So I think I actually bought a PS3 because of Dead Space. I was an Xbox player. Oh, yeah. And I had a okay. roommate who had a PS3, and he was sick of me being in his room. <laughs> So I think I literally went out and spent way too much money just to play Dead Space. But that franchise was amazing from like Dude, first, second I, to third. I, it was so good. Yeah. And there there hasn't been anything, I mean, at least that I've seen, there hasn't been anything quite like it since. Then. Yeah. It's like, especially like even like I consider mm. Dead Space a horror game, like a, like a, in the genre oh, yeah. of horror. But horror games these days are just kind of like you're existing with like a free flow choice, but like it's kind of just a long cinematic too at the same time. Like it doesn't feel as involved, but dude, I remember probably actually shitting my pants playing the first Dead Space. Because oh my god, a lot of people will even say soundtrack. Oh, it's so solid, dude. It was so good. Yeah, a lot of people say the first one was the scariest, and then it got more action packed as like the series went on, like two and three. So just the first one was. I could see that. Ooh, it was so good. Did I actually? You can't see it now. I have a poster hanging in my hallway out here that is. I think it's from the first Dead Space. Um, it's one of you remember the church in the game. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, like, they worshipped the spire and, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so they had, uh, throughout the ship, they had all these posters hanging up that said, uh, said like, come come join us in room whatever. It's got like a room <laughs> number on it. And you can see the, the markers. There's, it's this big, beautiful like landscape, and there's these two blue, like beautiful looking markers. Remember the marker, right? That yeah, was yeah. like the, the big the thing. Yeah. So yeah, in this image, there's like all these beautiful towers or or whatever, and then you can see all these little people like flocking to the the markers, and it just looks like this beautiful like holy scene, and, it, and it's just like that's so badass. Like it I, is when sick. I saw that poster, I was like, I need this poster. So you have the ex- like the actual in game poster, like the poster that's yeah. Should I grab it? No, it's okay. I because people okay. people can look that up if they want to, but that's it's super. definitely a, it's definitely online. You can see it. That's so sick. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's um, awesome. I need more video yeah, that, games like memorabilia in my house. I just have I don't have much. That's like honestly, that's like the really That's really a good one. one though. That's like a that's a that's a hidden gem, if you ask me. Yeah. My my fiance hates it. She she's like, <laughs> what is this? That like is... you wouldn't understand, baby. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> that's good. Um Are you yeah. playing any video so games on Twitch? Um not yet, but I pl- I definitely plan on it. Okay. Um, I was thinking about doing Last of Us two, but ooh, good one. I don't know. Did did you did you play that one? I haven't played it yet, but the last the first Last of Us was so incredible that like I'll get around to oh, it. Oh, dude, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, one of my top f- five video games of all time. Yeah. So good. Um, Last of Us two was. Well, you haven't played it yet, so maybe I shouldn't say anything. Okay. It was it good? <laughs> it was a video game. Oh, okay. All right. I get what you're saying. It was a tour. That's, that was Yeah. 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 <laughs> I get what you're saying. But nonetheless, it's still like it's still a beautiful looking game. So you've already played through game, it. Yeah, I I I played through the whole thing. Nah, I don't play that um, on stream then. That one's kind of like You should you should try something new. I think. Something new, yeah. Yeah. I I need to dive into something new and just and just do that on Twitch. Um there was a game that I played a couple years ago now that I haven't really heard much about and I know it's got kind of a cult following uh and and this is game called uh, Near Automata Automata Yeah 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 the like Have you heard of this? Isn't that like anime Dark Souls? Isn't that what the vibe is for that? I'm not I don't I never played Dark Souls so I'm not sure but yeah. 
Someone in the chat it definitely will, has, will flame me. If it I'm definitely wrong. has some like anime vibes to it. Yeah, and yeah. it's like kind of weeby in some ways. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, the weeby Dark but, Souls, I think, is the weeby Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> but the story, the storyline and the uh the combat system was like so fun and highly recommend that game to so anyone who is like that's like what Dark Souls like when you think of like the souls, if we're going to talk about a cult following is insane. The soul series. Yeah. Um, and they are, they're Maybe phenomenal that's... games. Me and Jesse both are like souls heads for sure. Nice. <laughs> um, souls heads. I yeah. Like I just made that up. I'm coined that one. <laughs> uh, and then they went on to do like a, like a, I always forget the name of it. I like, I should know, remember all this stuff. There's a there's like the Soul series, which is Dark Souls one through three, right? And then they released a game called Bloodborne, which is a uh, forget the name of this term. It's like more dark and culty than it is like medieval. That game's phenomenal. And then they put out Sekiro, which is like a samurai game, but they all follow this very specific recipe that this uh company kind of brought up from the ground which is like the idea of a bonfire being the only safe haven in the entire game like it's just oh they're so good if you've never played those that's something you can just like be alone and still love endlessly yeah they're so good um okay so that's that's going on the list of uh new games to check out for sure I feel like I've had that game recommended too many, too many times. Yeah, it's just such to, a to just ignore. Yeah, it's so good. I would actually possibly even recommend Bloodborne first. Okay. It's hard to get into the, like the earlier Souls games now because they're so much clunkier than they felt back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. But like Bloodborne and Dark Souls Three, though that like those combat mechanics are unparalleled to me still. I think. Can you play these two games without having the knowledge of the stories from the previous games? Bloodborne, yes, it's a completely set alone game, so its story is all within itself. Uh, same as Sekiro, it's a standalone. The Dark Souls series. So they don't like tell you a story really. A lot of the lore is in just like little bios on the items you pick up. Like it's like that level of nerdy. Okay. Um, yeah, it's wild. Uh what I would actually say to do is just play Dark Souls 3 and then go to this one dude one dude's YouTube's who his entire life is just explaining Dark Souls lore, and you could get lost in that for hours. <laughs> like it's just crazy. <laughs> if anyone knows, that. remembers that guy's <laughs> name, they can link that in the chat too. Uh, yeah, it's wild. But I mean, the Souls series, you could probably play through the story. Like if you really try, you could probably play through the story in like twelve hours. But I've probably put two hundred okay. hours of gaming into those game, like one of the games. Oh damn! It's crazy. Oh damn! Okay. Yeah. So it's one of those that can... It's just fun. Suck your life yeah. away from you. <laughs> yeah. It's the Blink-182 so, of gaming. So that... It's just so fun. You can't stop. <laughs> and all your friends are doing it. Yeah, all your friends are, you, you know, gotta do it. slaying yeah. beasts. and. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's definitely on the list now for sure. Um, and, I was going to say, yeah. And if you want to play something on stream, people love to watch you fail at Dark Souls. Okay, good because I suck at video games. <laughs> you you could take like an elite gamer who's never played Dark Souls and watch them just get slaughtered because it's they're like oh, yeah. they're like yeah. notorious for being difficult. Um, gotcha. It's it's great though. I, I love, love it. I love that. Yeah, it's fun. What else do you play? Um. So I've spent a lot Anything of time on the Souls games. Uh. I play League of Legends a lot. There was a game that my favorite game for a long time was a game called Paragon. If you've ever heard of it. And it, it was basically League of Legends, 
it's a MOBA, so you have like your towers that you defend and then a base you have to kill or whatever. But it was done within a third yeah. person and on the Unreal Engine. So it was a beautiful, well mechanic, like greased up machine version of League of Legends. It was so sick. Gotcha. Um, it was made by the company that did Fortnite. And when Fortnite got big, they just scrapped the entire game. It never existed. Oh, wow. Super weird. Okay. Super weird decision. And now... What do you think of Fortnite? I think it's a child's game. <laughs> I think it's made to look like a child's cartoon because it's for children. <clears throat> anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, so here's the weird thing about Paragon is that two game companies are racing to re- re-release the game first. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so there's a game you called... Kinda, you- yeah, I have I have no idea what's going to happen. It's really weird. There's a game called Fault and there's a game called Predecessor. And they're both the same game. They're both Paragon, but they're made by different companies and they have like different I guess like polishes on them, you know, like their own yeah. like versions of them, but yeah. I hope one of them is good and like is reminiscent of Paragon cuz that was my favorite game, you know. It's really weird. Are they releasing both or is it kind of like whoever has the better game? I think, yeah, no, I think they're both going to release. And what's scary is I think because they're competing with each other on a time frame, I think they're both suffering in my opinion. If that makes sense. Like they're both rushing to beat each other. So like the game's kind of suffering. But even if the game is not sick, I'll probably just play it because it makes me think of Paragon and that was my favorite game. Like That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> when when it releases, I'll send you a beta code and we'll we'll get into it together. We'll get All right, yeah, dude. Yeah. We'll I'm it. so down. Yeah. I love I love that the pandemic brought this huge crowd to Twitch cuz now I can like actually just game with all my homies that I've never gotten to game with, you know. <laughs> Cool. It, yes, I I, th- I think it's the the coming together thing. I think has really been really cool, and um, I'm I'm stoked to be getting back slowly back into more video games. Yeah. Uh, lately, I've, since I've been working a lot, I I haven't. I've, it's fallen off completely, but I definitely need to uh, stick some of that back into my my schedule. Yeah, it's hard. You know, you get older, you got a lot of stuff going on. There's a reason yeah. video games are mainly played by younger people because they got time on their hands and it's easier. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. Super. Yeah. But I love it. I love gaming. Like I always have. I probably always will. So that there will always be some aspect of my day. Because like like I said, now I'm watching highlights, and that's you know sometimes if I'm not playing video games, I'll just do that. I just watch highlights and compile videos and stuff like that. Yeah, that Super sounds fun. like a really cool gig. It's take all the work out of it. The aspect that I'm just doing anything with a video game and I'm getting paid for it. Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's it's something that you already like to do, and it's it's it. They're paying you to do it, so yeah. Um, <laughs> we have a little food section on the podcast, but we already talked about zucchini bread. <laughs> Is there anything else you're all food, dude? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Is there anything else you're like crazy about right now or that you like to cook at the house or? Um, so much to maybe your dismay. I actually recently became an ex vegetarian. Whoa. No longer. No longer vegetarian. Okay. Um, and I, I, I mean, I'd still, you know, stick to a lot of the same stuff that I was eating, like, um, trying to eat, trying to eat the plants, you know, as, as much as possible. Right. Not, not that I do a great job at that, but, uh, um, my fiance is still vegetarian. I actually convinced her to do it years back. That's and so funny. Now she hates, now she hates me that I'm <laughs> jumping ship again. Uh, so that's, that's been an interesting, uh, thing to deal with in a in a relationship but i think it's been i think it's been good overall yeah Um, i mean you've at least been vegetarian so you know 
you, you know how to, I guess, I don't want to say that in a weird way. You know, like what to do and what to expect when you're eating around someone else who's vegetarian or like where you need to go in order to accommodate to a vegetarian, oh, like sure. stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And yeah, so I've gotten into, well, just gotten into really like learning how to, to cook certain meats like, just because I've, I've never done it in yeah. my, uh, you know, adult life, like living, you know, on, on my own. Um, so, you know, since I'd been a vegetarian so long, I had not had the, you know, the necessity to, to know how to cook some of this stuff. So I've been learning how to cook chicken and well, I've started there and maybe I'll move on. And is there a reason night. you started eating meat again, or is it just out of like convenience or, um, it's, it's not a convenience thing really at all. Um, you know, I've, I've always been interested in like the health aspect of diet. And really that was what drove me to be a vegetarian in the first place was everything that I was seeing at the, around that time was like pointing me to, you know, stop eating meat basically. Right. And I never really, I guess I didn't settle on that. I, I wanted to keep learning about, uh, health and diet. And so sort of loosely I kept, you know, keeping up with, with stuff over the years. And I don't know, just things that I'd seen over time ha had kind of made me see that. Sorry. I, my computer's beeping at you. I don't know if you can even, Oh hear no, that. I can't No, You're, you're solid. I can't hear. Okay. Um, just things that I'd seen over, over the years had started pointing me in a direction that was showing me like, at least the way that I was eating as a vegetarian was not right. Yeah. Um, healthy and in a way because yeah, being you, a vegetarian it's, it's it's if you want to be a healthy vegetarian there's actually like you need to ingest a lot more of like superfoods that a lot of places don't a don't offer and b people just don't right. eat them like people should be just like filling themselves with lentils and like like exactly like super yes. grains and, and like supplementing omega-3s and all that stuff but like people are like i'll have a bean burrito you know yeah yeah, I and get that's it. kind of the conclusion I came to yeah. was like, yeah, yeah. if I'm going to be a vegetarian, I, I, at this point, I have to be doing it right. And it, and yeah. that entails like just eating so much food and it's just like, maybe not so much food, but just eating a lot throughout the day. And, um, see, I love that. I, I do really. Yeah. That was like one of my main things for going vegetarian is because I already did it, but I was eating a lot of meat throughout the day. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and I I do still believe I'm, like I'm not I'm not one of these folks who's like jumped over completely to the meat side. And I'm like you know not gonna eat vegetables, but um, I I'd still believe there's a a right way to to be a vegetarian and and be healthy. I just I just wasn't doing it, and it wasn't yeah. working for me yeah, with, yeah. with the the with the reality of my life, you know. So yes. And, and there's a happy um, medium, you know, like you've probably learned the yeah. importance of a plate with a small meat portion and a large vegetable portion. That's yep. how it should be. Yeah. I, I fell victim to like the American diet, which was like a double cheeseburger, add bacon, and then like a starch. Yep. Like it's just, it's so... It's not that's not what health is, and there's a reason America has like an insane obesity rate. Right. When did you actually go vegetarian? So when I was 18, I was pescatarian for like a year or two. I ate fish. Yeah. Uh, just because like that's an easy entryway, you know, eating fish. Because like fish actually does give you a lot of yeah. the stuff that vegetarian diets lack. Um, as far as iron right. and protein and omega threes and blah blah blah, um, mm -hmm. and then I actually started touring an era, and I was like, "Nope, can't do this. I have to eat meat because I'm living off two McDoubles a day." Like those were <laughs> like, dude, that was back. We were getting three dollar per diems back then, so like, yeah, I wasn't. That's the that's the early tour diet, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the same shit, and dude, I—it's weird. I, I somehow even lost weight 
eating two McDoubles like almost daily. Well, because it was just they're just fake calories or something. Right. Yes. Honestly, you're right. It's like not nutritious. So we're like, but that's why we're also getting sick on tour. We have shitty immune systems and it's just such an unhealthy lifestyle when you can't accommodate for it. I'm sure as well as you have over the years, you've like figured out how to like maintain a healthy lifestyle through touring as best you can. I'm sure. Or more or less. Yeah. 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 Like I don't tours have been better than others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I guess maybe three years ago now I went back to just full on vegetarian and I just, I probably went a little too hard. Like the environment's always a factor on me when I'm thinking about meat consumption and stuff like that. So like, it's just, I, I probably, it's been a while now where I just, I don't think I can go back. But when I started being vegetarian, it was for diet. Um, cause I've, yep. I've always eaten a lot. I've always, I can put down an insane mm. amount of food in one sitting. And if I put down an insane, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's funny. If I put down an insane amount of greens compared to an insane amount of meat, it's just like, obviously this side is better. Um, so that's like my first yeah. reasoning for going vegetarian. Yep. I think I could be totally wrong about this and have had something completely ass backwards in my thinking, but um, it's it's from at least from what I've what I've gathered, it seems like carbs are kind of a, especially if you're eating carbs with other things. So if if you're eating a lot of carbs and you're a meat eater, you're in extra trouble because the carbs are sort of like amplifying these effects that the meat is having on your body. Yeah. And in my, at least my uh, search of like trying to find diets that are low in carbs, it just made sense to, to try and get some more meat incorporated into that. Well, and it's like, there's the keto diet, right? And it's obviously yeah. works and you can be super healthy on that. But if I was vegetarian and tried the keto diet, I'd probably pass away. There's like just no way. <laughs> so like, yeah, you just have to find what works for you. Um, actually, tr- I actually did vegetarian keto for a couple weeks, uh, two years ago over the summer. And um, I, I did it. It, it worked for a while, I, you, I don't you think went that that's something ketosis. that you can, I think, yeah, okay. yeah, I was doing a lot of fasting and, um, I was eating the, eating the right stuff and I was doing a lot of running and, uh, I was honestly, I, two years ago in the summertime, I was, uh, in the best shape of my whole life around that time that stuff, the vegetarian yeah. Wow. keto. Yeah. Um, but that's I definitely don't think that that is, I don't think keto in any, uh, any setup vegetarian or not is like necessarily sustainable for yeah it's, like, it's something you can do if you need to like lose weight or whatever but yeah dude i don't think it's something that you can just live with forever you yeah know? I, i'm gonna so. have to 100 percent agree with you on that. yeah well so what were you eating as vegetarian keto so there was um an insane amount of avo- uh, avocado <laughs> avocado <laughs> I oh, watched, yes. I watched oh, yes. too much Vine. <laughs> um, yeah, lots, of, lots of, of avocado. Yeah. There was a certain uh, bean that I was getting a lot of. I think it was cannellini beans. Okay. Uh, but, I, but I forget exactly what it was. It was a white bean. Um, it's, and it was supposedly like one of the lower carb beans. And I, I'm pretty sure it had a good amount of protein. Um, but like that's the thing right like if you're vegetarian keto i feel like you're just living this like monochromatic diet that like yes you just get just so burnt out on this shit. Uh, well like in the same weird shit non-stop yes that's like i could not do yeah, that yeah, yeah. I could not do that yeah. at all I, when it got to a point where i was I was making these shakes that <laughs> consisted of all the stuff and you know <laughs> what color it was it weird whatever <laughs> What color was it? It was orange. Oh, wow. I was expecting like baby brown poop. (laughs) That's funny. It had lots of uh, uh, turmeric in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll turn anything gold. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that did that. Um, wow. And that was for, cause I was doing, I was doing lots of running. So that was for like the anti-inflammatory thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's like you said, it's just this bleak diet. <laughs> it's like, I feel you like I really look forward to eating any of it. Yeah. Like I feel like, like those <laughs> people who diet that hard and like strict, they don't enjoy eating anymore. That's just not part of their yeah. lifestyle. They just eat this, this future fuel that people have <laughs> blended and then they exist so that they can live the rest of their life in yeah. like an insanely healthy way. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And I think for, <laughs> for some folks that sacrifice is like necessary for a while. Yeah. But, but like, get it, get away from that as soon as you're, as soon as you're done, you know? Yeah. Um, as soon as I you, may, I may have, as soon as you accomplished whatever goal that you're, I was going to say, as forward. soon as you, uh, filmed Batman that year, cause you're an actor and you're like being forced by millions of dollars to get some insane oh. shape. <laughs> Because those that's exactly, those yeah. are the people who come to mind. It's like people are like astounded that like freaking Chris Hemsworth just got so shredded, but that guy probably just ate blended future fuel for like two years and did nothing but that. And that's like I don't like okay, yeah. you look good, but I'm not gonna live that life, you know. I'm not ready for that. I yeah. Know. Dude, have you heard of uh David Goggins? I haven't. So he's been on, I don't know if you watch Rogan much, but he's been on Rogan at least once. Um, he's got a book called, uh, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's it's his story of going through uh, Bud's Navy SEALs training. He went through it like three or four times, Ugh. like voluntarily. Yeah. Um, this This guy is just a, he's a machine. Yeah. And part of his story was that in order to to join buds he had to pass this test and he barely passed but he also had to like lose 160 pounds in like no time at all i think it was like i don't know a handful of weeks or something it was like 3 months or something like that he Ugh. had to lose 160 pounds and uh i i can't remember if he goes much into diet around how he did it through diet but he goes through like what he was doing exercise wise and this dude was just like this this shit would kill you yeah yeah it's insane like like the you have to get into doing. shape before you get into his shape like that's like <laughs> that kind of right. stuff and is he was, insane to me yeah and he was doing this stuff as like a fat guy like it was, it was crazy if are uh, you a are you much of an audiobook guy I'm not. I just okay. I, yeah, I've I feel like I've been sensory overload my life. Like I've never read. I think I've read two books in my entire life, and that's insane. But like I just oh, never yeah. made the time for it. Um, yeah, I was kind of the same way for forever, and I do I feel like I found a couple books that that I actually liked. And yeah, I need to do that because that's what it. that's what everyone says. I just need to find those couple that like suck me in at first, and then. Um, there's actually, there's that, that new Netflix show with Zac Efron for whatever reason, but he like travels around with this guy who wrote a book about superfoods. I think he's vegan as well. Okay. Um, so it's really that guy's show, but they're just using Zac Efron as like the face of the show. It's so funny, but it's like, it's cause they're like good friends. Right. Yeah. It's a good show though. You should check it out. It's like. It's like good mindless watching, like just have on the background, like while you're eating dinner or something. If you're one it, of those uh, down to earth, I think so. Yeah. Yes, it is that show. Yeah. Um, nice shot. I want to read the book that guy wrote because after watching his show, he's, he's a bit of like a guru kind of guy. Like there's one episode yeah. where they land down from a, from like a long day of traveling and he just wants to be barefoot on the grass really bad. Like he just needs that because he wants to like recenter his gravity and magnetic pool to earth. And like, I love that stuff. Like it I sounds see. crazy, yeah. but like, it's also like, what's the harm in being barefoot on the ground when you did a long flight? Like, you know, like I love the right. idea of that kind of stuff. So well, I it also just feels good too. Like, right. No matter what you just did, like, 
taking your shoes off and walking through sand or walking through the grass. I think like, he was saying like if you say you're on tour and you're flying to Australia, it's like a 14 hour flight, which translates to like a 30 hour travel day, right? And then you exactly. find some <laughs> local grass or whatever, just get barefoot, stand in it. And it says that it's supposed to like completely relieve you of your jet lag, supposedly. Wow. Yeah. I'm, hopefully I have the chance to try that. Yeah, sometime. I know. Yeah. So I, I want to read his book yeah. and like get like, I want to like absorb his thinking and his mind on that kind of stuff. Cause it does sound crazy, but I want to know why it's not crazy to him. <laughs> Cause I love that, you know, like it's right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, put, get that, put that to the test, man. Yeah. Oh, for sure. will. so we're coming to a close. Uh, I always have chat ask Robbie, <laughs> Robbie specifically, whatever questions that you want to ask and I'll relay the, them to him. Uh, but while they're okay. getting questions going, do you believe in aliens? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. To what degree? Like that they're out there or that they're walking among us? That they have inhabited um, Donald Trump's body? <laughs> I, dude. Okay, so I've, I've totally seen like UFOs or something in the sky that I could not explain that I could tell you for certain was not like candle floating on a a you know a selfie stick it was definitely like yeah <laughs> a, yeah floating selfie stick it was definitely okay so and this is a a quick little uh tour thing that that happened i was in utah just driving the band van years ago like 5 in the morning i'm just like caffeinated to my eyeballs <laughs> going yeah. to sleep yeah and i'm i'm seeing all of these things just in the sky just flying around at just what seemed like just absolutely insane speed and they're zipping around in all these crazy like formations or whatever and i'm like i'm looking at ufos right now there's like and everyone's asleep i can't tell anyone right yeah <laughs> so that i've that never me at least seen anything like that but i've definitely yeah. gone down the rabbit hole of like some of those videos that people have on YouTube are just like a little too convincing and weird. Right. 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 Um, the one yeah, I totally, I totally believe they're at the, they're at least out there. Who knows if they're among us. Right. I mean, maybe Donald Trump is an alien. That would explain a lot of shit. And I don't, sorry to viewers. I don't mean to just literally call Donald Trump out. I mean like the whole reptilian race type vibe that they're all in power and yeah, stuff. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone asked, have you ever tried DMT? They they said, oh, that. <laughs> so when you brought up Joe Rogan, they were like, oh, that's why he's eating meat again. He probably has a freezer full of elk meat and he does DMT. <laughs> um, I, I have actually not done DMT. Okay. Um, but I'm pretty intrigued. Yeah, same. Stories that I've, that I've heard from, from people are, are like, I mean, I've been straight edge. And I've heard for, horror stories, too. Yeah, I haven't heard many horror stories. It's scary. Uh, I've been straight edge for almost 10 years, right, but I, I, will, yeah. I will have an ayahuasca experience at some point in my life. I've, I'm, yeah, I've always wanted to do that, too. Yeah. I want to, like, go to, like, a shaman, you know, possibly in the Amazon. Yeah. I really want to try that one out. Um. Yeah, any... Any experience that it has something to to teach you about yourself that that you might not get otherwise, and I think it's it's totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think that's what those chemicals do. I think they just force you to come face to face with some stuff that you haven't dealt with, or 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 who knows? Maybe maybe you just have a trip in La La Land and it's all good. <laughs> yeah, true which is also a possibility. Yeah. And I've heard stories that that is kind of similar to what it's like. It's just, it's everyone has yeah. their own unique experience, which is cool. That's right. Yeah. Uh, did you guys get hate from changing your quote unquote sound going from super heavy to chill? I could probably answer that question for him as any band releases any new music, you get hate. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely some disgruntled fans. 
and um and I can relate to that you know I've I've seen some of my favorite bands change um some of them for the for for the good and some of them not so yeah yeah there's definitely a good amount of hate uh especially after clairvoyant that was Dude. such a shift my like, favorite record you guys have ever a... done really yep Damn, dude, that's that's cool. Well, and today is uh, it's funny. Clairvoyant's yeah, birthday. I saw that. Yeah, it's actually super wild. Uh, yeah, I love Clairvoyant. When you guys played it, I think it was actually that was my number one of Spotify that year. It was Clairvoyant. Oh shit, that's awesome. Man. It's an experience. It's super cool. And I'll I'll, I'll probably say too. <clears throat> and that's just like how it is with bands' albums, right? Like I think albums have to speak to you in the time of your life you know what i mean if that makes sense yeah. like i think clairvoyant came out at a very clairvoyant time of my life maybe is the best way to word that i i hear that yeah, yeah. i'm getting super out there today i'm just being wild um <laughs> will we see signature pickups or even a guitar from a robbie signature time is a question Signature pickups are definitely in the works. Okay. Um, but nothing is uh, completely set in stone yet, but yep. um, it's definitely the the process is is in motion. Uh, signature guitar. Um, that process is um, not quite as close as the uh, the signature <laughs> pickups, but yeah. but we're, we're we're working on it. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. We're, we're spamming Mike Arrigo every once in a while. <laughs> Just a lengthy email every month. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like texting please, him. Like, hey, dude, signature guitar. Come on. <laughs> come on dude. I, I feel like it could come for you guys. I feel like that's coming. I think. I already said earlier that he loves That'd you guys. Sick, man. Yeah. Uh, any tips or yeah. warnings for a prog band starting out? Tips or warnings for a prog band starting out? <laughs> that is um, a funny question. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a good question for sure. Um, I have two answers for this. Okay. My first answer is stop now. Turn around. <laughs> <run away. laughs> yeah, okay. We saw that one coming. <laughs> Don't. All right. That's my, that's my joke question or my yep. joke response. Yes. But my serious response is... Um, and this goes for really anybody in, in a band. It's just like, you know, being dudes in a band is, you know, it can be, it could be rough. Um, it's going to be egos clashing. You got to find a way to deal with that in a way that is like productive and um, is not going to be, you know, like degenerative in the long run. Right. Yeah. And, I, I feel like a lot of bands struggle with that. And the other thing that I've noticed about being in a band is like, sometimes it can be hard for um, like leadership to be established because, you know, you've got sometimes in a band, you can have multiple leader types and sometimes it can be just hard for dudes to know when to follow and when to lead and sometimes it helps just to like acknowledge that fact and uh um, yeah. yeah so yeah being in a band is 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 to touch on that subject it's like when you get five males and, and i'm not going to say it's specific to males but like we're a very ego driven type especially in our genre too like metal when you think right. of a metal dude you know um <laughs> he's a he's a hectic dude he's got shit to say <laughs> it's like he's not gonna have any of your shit <laughs> yeah dude when you put five egos in a room and then like try to control like a an idea or like a creative platform it can be hard but yeah and that that's a good point right there is like there's there's a whole magic to bringing an idea to a, a group of guys and then trying to cultivate some kind of collaborative effort and maybe that's not how your band operates maybe your band is just one guy doing most of the writing and 
everybody else just falls in line. But if, if you are lucky enough to be surrounded by other creatives who are like willing to participate and if, if you're not like engaging those guys to like participate with you, it's, it's not going to be good. Right. So yeah. It's like, you almost have to like figure out like, what are you, what are your dudes to like, what are your dudes like, like, are, are they into collaborating in certain ways? Do you have to like finesse them? in some yeah, other like ways in, in order being to being in a band is like trying to discover five people's love languages at the same time you know <laughs> yes that's perfect that's, yeah. that's exactly it yeah yeah another thing i just came up with man i'm coining them today <laughs> you need to like write a book about it It would be a very short a band, book yeah. <laughs> it'd be a monologue chapter one put sell your equipment <laughs> <laughs> It would it would be like a a short pamphlet, uh, just an epilogue, but just like yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I'm I'm gonna call it here. This has All actually right. been a long one. We we crushed it. We did, man. It's yeah. been what two and a half hours. Yeah, and I will be on your stream tomorrow. Hopefully, we have things left to discuss or exist about. And oh yeah, we're we're gonna we'll have some questions for you. All right, curveballs. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm gonna um try to get some material. Like I said before, um, yeah, I linked Sick, I stoked. linked the streams so that tomorrow we can hit it. Um, but yep. Robbie, this has been awesome, dude. Absolutely, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, of course, brother. Um, yeah, I'll catch you later, dude. Tomorrow. All right, brother.